we are streaming. Oh, we started, huh? Yeah, we started. We need to be like those cool YouTubers that has those epic intros every time they stream. No can do. Hey, everybody! I'm having some bread from a baker nearby. But people want you. They want me? I'm just trying to get into the stream on the phone. What's going on, everybody? Can you guys hear us okay? Please let us know. Because I think... I think we finally got to the point where we shouldn't have any issues. Starting on time, well, we're like a minute late, but audio should be good, video is good, let us know, let us know. What are you eating, Becky? So, Cam Cam, <laughs> I'm eating, it's called the hot chili sausage bread. Very and creative name. This is Gorgonzola honey baguette. Mm. And it's so tasty. I've been up since 5 a.m. today because today is my niece's one-year birthday and they live in the U.S. and so it's called Chattor, like one-year birthday celebration, so it's very special. So I woke up at 5 a.m. so that I could attend the Chattor via Zoom, which on one hand is really happy and on one hand also really sad. But because of that, I have been awake for five and a half hours. It's a long time, y'all. 5 a.m. Sweet. Audio sounds good. Thank you, guys. Finally worked it out. Finally worked it out. Mm. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I will tell her happy birthday. Yo, I can't even, like, figure out how to get on the live stream on my own. <laughs> my own app. Where are you? I don't know. Maybe it's not showing up here. I'm doing it not. Yeah. You have to use your phone. Mmm. Thank you. This blouse, I just bought it last week. I never buy clothes. I borrow clothes from a closet sharing app. So, I actually bought this for myself. So, I'm very proud of it. And I've worn it like four times since I bought it last week. <laughs> it's like four days. <laughs> Do y'all like my shirt too? It's new. This is new and he's very proud of it. Yeah, I actually, um, I ordered this from the U.S. I think it was the last live stream someone asked about, like, shopping. And, uh, you know, I think at that point, um, I didn't order these, but I was saying how I don't like to do a lot of my clothes shopping here because I don't like the fit of most clothes here on me because I'm very particular with that. So I found a company in the U.S., and I'll give them a shout-out. It's Cuts Clothing, and they just do T-shirts. So it's, like, really good material. It's very form-fitting. What it's you're like saying perfect. is he's too muscular to wear ordinary clothes. No, 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 no. So and, and I had to get it shipped, so the shipping wasn't too bad. As a matter of fact, I think it was free shipping, orders over $150. Hmm. Yeah, so I didn't have to pay for shipping. That's pretty good. Got here in like less than two weeks. Yeah, you were very happy. You know, before every single video filming, <laughs> he literally was like, I don't have anything to wear. <laughs> I don't want to look bad. It's true. He struggles. Okay, finally figured it out. Dang. Mmm. It's spilling everywhere. I'm sorry. Mmm. The live chat. Okay, now I see you guys. We got 49 people with us now. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Show them guns. I'm so sorry. I'm being very distracted, guys. Because I woke up very early. Yo, let me get some of that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna just chill for a couple minutes. Wait for maybe some more people to get in and see how you guys are doing. What everyone's been up to. Mm -hmm. So. What should we ask people to know how you guys are all doing? How's life in your part of the world? Mm. 
especially with all the craziness going on. Yeah, please give us an update. It's mm. best to know from people who are actually living where they're living. Yeah, so let us know where you're living. We know where a handful of you guys are from, but like for those that are in the chat that may not know, give us a little context and then um, let us know how things are over there. And then we can talk about here mm. in Korea. We've been getting like some more cases in the past couple of days, a couple of weeks really. <laughs> they said show your guns. Oh, I did. You missed it. I and gave him a gun show. Rad Roos said, I meant Becky's guns. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man. Thank you. Show them. <laughs> you got the see through and everything. <laughs> Look at that. I can't even compare to that. I do work out. Hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we've been getting some more cases, like some more um, outbreaks here. Yeah, we have. And so... All churches were closed down again. It's it's almost like, in my mind, it's kind of to be expected. Mm -hmm. I mean, Korea is still, still doing phenomenal considering, um, you know, I guess how many other places are doing. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's still it's still easy to infect others, even if everyone's yeah. wearing a mask. It just depends on, like, how many people are congregating and if, like... Mm -hmm someone who's infected touches somebody who has a mask and that somebody has it mm -hmm. and then like takes off their mask and like touches their face or something mm -hmm. i mean it's bound to it's happen just, it's just so easily spreadable that's pretty much it. right i mean i think i still think korea is doing a phenomenal job mm -hmm. um i just it's just kind of like discouraging when you see the numbers go back up into the like yeah triple oh, digits so yeah but we're doing we're doing okay over here like yeah. becky and i we're doing fine Trying so how are you guys best. doing so some people, Jay is living the dream as always, mm. and uh, Ivy says life is crazy in the U.S. Washington D.C. never a dull moment. Tez says in Michigan there's a lot of protests. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and then well, happiness was asking what's the best way to stay cool when there's no air conditioning. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's really bad. I heard that you can actually um, one hundred degrees. Take oh my towels. Gosh. Put them in cold water and then hang up the towels over your windows. I heard really? that helps. Mm. Yo, try that. To cool it down. If you have enough towels, yeah. And then uh, Erica says there's a lockdown in Austin, Texas until December the 15th. Staying positive. December 15th? Yeah, that's, that's a long time. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. Yeah, at this point, the only option is to stay positive, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean... <sighs> There's so many ways to look at it. Like, um, like, it sucks that certain places are locked down and you can't really, you know, you're not free to really move. And there are a lot of different perspectives on that. And it tends to be politicized, so we won't get into that. But, like, the way that I would stay positive, I, I would imagine if I was in that situation, I would think, well, at least we have, like, the internet to keep us entertained. You know what I mean? I'd just be on YouTube all day. You I would imagine? be making videos every single day. I mean, I say that now. I'm sure it's really difficult, though. Like, yeah. after a couple of days and weeks, you're just like, oh, my gosh, you're it's getting cabin still, fever. And... You need people. It's hard yeah. to not have that. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not like, what do you call it? I'm not making light of the situation. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, just imagine being on lockdown in, like, 1920 or 1918 during 19, the Spanish flu. Pandemic, you huh? can't do nothing. You just sit in the house. That's it. <laughs> Was there, like, I'm there? being so stupid right now, but. There was electricity then, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, electricity was available. I don't know if how everyone had, had it. Because yeah. I was thinking, how much even worse, like, once the sun sets, it's just like... <laughs> just lighting a candle. <laughs> yeah, so from that angle, I feel like, you know, it's uh, if there ever was a good time to be locked down, it'd be now, if that makes sense. But Reggie. it's still difficult. Reggie BB says, life is good. Here in Trinidad and Tobago. Ooh, nice. Tomorrow we head back into lockdown. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we didn't have any cases for the past few months. Mm. Yeah. I honestly feel like pretty much anywhere in the world, it's it's gonna kind of be that possibility. Mm -hmm. Get out of lockdown. Get back in lockdown. Get out of lockdown. In lockdown. Really trying to think in the long run. Otherwise, it'll be very stressful. Right. Mm. We just need to get that vaccine. In Austin, it's very hot. About 110 degrees. Fahrenheit, I'm assuming, 
because <laughs> sounds seems to be cooked off here. Um, that's still very hot though. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've hit those levels at all this mm -hmm. summer. Not in Korea. No. Mm -hmm. We got into lower 30s. Yeah. Which is maybe like lower 90s degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Vicky says she's doing good. Um, I've been going to training. Okay, that's great since the last two weeks, and it's weird being outside. They're trying to open all by August 24th in El Salvador. Do you think that's personally looking around you in your society? Do you think that that would be the best thing? For she, you guys, I don't think or? she does because she did this emoji. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was a shrug. Let's see. Upstate New York. I heard that upstate New York, the rate of infection dropped. Hmm but I'm not really sure. So here it says, not too bad, slowly opening up, but the political climate right now, I feel like it's not stable in terms of rate of infection. So, hmm, I don't really know, yeah. North Carolina. Hmm. Rainy day, lots of walks and enjoying nature. Yeah. All right, I'm just eating my bread. That's very good. I'm very happy to hear that. Where are you from um, in NC? Tell the cute. Gordon Gold is so good. I love cheese. Oh, cheese. Brian Bell is originally from Texas, but currently in Arabia. Wow. Mm. COVID has had a pretty big impact there. Not allowed to leave the country for fear mm. of not being able to return. Currently employed here. You know, Becky and I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Because Korea is generally doing well, but most of the infections, at least in the past, I don't know, two months or so. Mm -hmm. You okay? Mm -hmm. Most of the infections in the past two months or so have been mostly out from the outside, like mm -hmm. being caught at the airport. Mm -hmm. um, but now, I mean, but there's still community spread, and now there are the outbreaks that are happening here, but mm -hmm. we're afraid of leaving and visiting the states. And there's a because, visa change. Right, or like there's a restriction, mm -hmm. whether it be temporary or a little bit more long-term, mm -hmm. of us making it more difficult for us to get back in. Because we go to states, we're gonna have to just like self-quarantine, and then if we come back here, we're mandatory. We have to. We have to quarantine for 14 days. Um, so, but we're just scared that we won't be able to come back because things are so bad in the U.S. and Korea is going to be like, well, we're going to have to just say no to the U.S. Mm. for right now. So, we're really scared to to leave. Did you see that? Oh, stop. Okay, so we've got some super chats going. The Mama Crow, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, always love the conversations y'all provide. Life in rural Ohio is okay. Ohio. Cases are limited, but we have them. I am mm. struggling with the political climate, trying to be happy mm. and keep a level head. Yeah, yeah uh, that's that's great. Um, that's about all you can do. To I, be honest, I think yeah. a lot of people are in the same boat mm -hmm. with the political climate and just trying to stay sane. Isn't it how, how unnerving it is that politics is so vital and important to our life and yet in many ways we feel very powerless but it still affects us so emotionally mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm. can't let it get to you yeah so yeah we're glad that you guys are at least doing okay mm. in rural ohio and by the way i was born in ohio i was born you didn't know that i didn't know that what do you think i was born you didn't watch my video <laughs> actually i stated that in several videos <laughs> either that or you didn't pay attention well, I thought, I thought you were born in Portugal. No, that was my sister. Mm. Wait, hold on. Where were you born? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah where was I born? Oh, snap. Hold on. Trust me, you'll never get this. Dang, where were you born? You'll never get it. In the U.S., I know that. So anyways, I was born in Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. So I was on an Air Force Base. but So I don't know if you know where that is, but that's where I was born. Mm. How long did you stay there in Ohio? Less than a year. Mm. Yeah, then we moved to South Carolina, and then Portugal, mm. and then North Carolina. So where was I born? I don't know. I've never told you. I've never asked, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then uh, Slick Rick Johnson, uh, thank you for the super chat as well. Just wanted to say hi. Hello, back to you. Hope all is well. And you are staying safe and healthy. Mm. Thank you so much. Let's see. Juno X Gaming. Plenty of time to study and play video games. 
Life has been grand. Wow, I think you, you're the only person I've heard that say in 2020. Mm. Uh, I'm an hour out of Atlanta. Mm. It's good, finding the positive things. Ivy Dean says, I've been eating all your food. Actually, she was eating my food because I got the gorgonzola bread. She got the little sausage bread or whatever, mm. the chili sausage. But she was eating my food, so. I love cheese. Let's see. Darren, I live in Dana Point, California. I work in the hospital in Irvine. And COVID-19 cases went down. That's great to hear. Yeah. Mm. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Telo Q is from the Raleigh area. Nice. I was in Fayetteville, if you didn't know. I was in Fayetteville for 20-some years of my life. So just an hour south of you. You were in Fayetteville? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Raleigh, Raleigh's nice. I actually was thinking about moving to Raleigh, but then ended up moving to New Jersey. Mm. Cool, cool, Chicago, cool. Chicago, low. This week, past week, protests, riots, block streets in your north Old Town Lincoln Park. Our numbers are going back up. Tons mm. of restaurants closed for good. <gasps> People of color dying higher numbers in Chicago. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Like... My opinion, my non-medical, non-scientific opinion, well, I guess it's kind of rooted in my understanding of science, is I think until we get a, I guess, a solution, long-term solution on a grand scale, probably in the form of vaccine, of course, for the COVID-19, I think there's just going to continue to be outbreaks mm -hmm. unless everyone is literally locked down and just staying away. Um, I I don't think it's possible to not have all, I mean just mm -hmm. again look at how well Korea is doing and we're still having these mm -hmm. little outbreaks Even New Zealand they had no outbreak for how many days it was like over 100 days really and then all of a sudden there was just a very random outbreak yeah. from somewhere and they're still I guess they're still figuring out how it started <sighs> yeah this is because like the and another big problem is is there's so many asymptomatic asymptomatic carriers mm -hmm. so it's so hard and if you don't have a good contact tracing mm -hmm system in place it's even more difficult. difficult so i think it's just gonna keep happening that way yeah. um just my opinion and yeah i mean it's kind of like it's it's totally different of course but like when polio was a big issue mm. and until the vaccine was created uh you know polio po polio polio was almost like totally pretty much totally eradicated mm -hmm. with the vaccine after some time mm -hmm. so hopefully that'll be very similar mm. with covid I listened to, so I listened to Stuff You Should Know podcast. This is where I get a lot of my trivia. And Stuff You Should Know recently did an episode with Bill Gates and specifically asking him, like, how's this, the vaccine thing going, right? How's it getting developed? And he theorized that if we get the right vaccine out and to everybody, we can eradicate COVID-19. Mm. So some people might have fears of it, it's different from the flu in that regard where the flu is changing all the time and mutating and so you make a new one every year but he was saying that in this case of COVID-19 he thinks if we had the proper vaccine it would be eradicated it wouldn't come back yeah but we can only hope yeah I trust Bill I know a lot of people don't but I think oh yeah yeah I mean I don't trust him with my life I like his glasses I like the way he talks but uh yeah Mm. Hey. hey, babe, can you scoot over a little bit? Cause we're off centered. Oh, I gotta, I gotta be like symmetrical. Yeah. Khan, welcome. Just arrived. What's up, Khan? Glad he's here. Thank you, A Horton. Uh, hi, Vida. We are well. Hope you guys are well. Hope mm. you're well. Yeah. By the way, Ivy, uh, Ivy Dean. Where in South Carolina? Uh, where was it? It was an Air Force Base, John, uh, Seymour Johnson, I think. Yeah, I think it was Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Mm. Yeah, that's where my dad was stationed. So I'm assuming you're maybe from South Carolina? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so from Jaquela. Since you may not be able to come back to the U.S., curious to know if you will be able to or allowed to vote by mail. Gosh, uh, the mail thing. Yeah, yeah, we are allowed to vote yeah. by mail. Um, so the deadline for, um, I guess, requesting the normal way of doing it mm. is already passed. But then you can do the more emergency way mm. where you write in um, 
I guess your candidate. So that's still an option, which is that's that's what I'm gonna have to do because I missed a deadline. But I'm gonna write in um, my candidate. So we can still do it. But each state is different as well. So her home state would be, I, would, I guess now it would be Virginia because that's where family is. And for me, it would be North Carolina. Mm. Yeah. So we can still we can vote. Yeah, but the post office. I'm very frustrated because I sent a gift box to my family for my niece's first year birthday. Mm. And it didn't arrive, even though it was expedited shipping. And I sent it way in advance. And the post office basically in Korea was like, hey, we can track you in Korea, but in the U.S. we have no control what's going to happen. We can't even predict when it would arrive. Yeah. So that was very sad. Hope it will get there soon. Yeah. it's a lot of trouble with that too, man. Mm -hmm. It's just like so much drama this year. Crazy. Uh, Grace Chong. So... I just translate for some people she's in Florida right now and right now uh, it's getting worse and worse and next semester for school they they're doing it in person so but she does hope that it would improve quickly the whole situation and that everyone is healthy oh, oh man yeah <laughs> I'll translate. She said, in person, it's kind of like it's a scary, scary mm. but Please just stay, stay healthy. healthy. See? Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, in a, in a few minutes, we're going to get into uh, some of the topics that we want to talk about. Uh, we're going to probably start with the show that we were on. So, um, so that's coming in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But yep. the reason why I bring that up is, Becky and I, we decided to really up our Korean game and um, and we'll tell you why in a few minutes mm -hmm. but it's all related to the show yeah hey right here Radverse asked the question oh I'm so sorry I meant to respond to you via Instagram because you messaged me I actually took a screenshot so that I would refer to it again but you've got to us first here <clears throat> um, who wants to know what our personal kind of pizza is pizza yeah my favorite yeah hmm that's difficult What about you? Oh! Yours is pepperoni. It's probably pepperoni. Oh! Okay, so, yeah. I'm, I'm conflicted. Because taste-wise, just basic pepperoni is good to me. But then I think about, but really to enjoy the pizza, and also think of more healthy benefits, I think a really nice supreme pizza. <laughs> I don't think supreme pizza has health benefits <laughs> over... <laughs> It just it has healthy <laughs> toppings that just simply add calories on top of the pepperoni and the cheese. That's all all right, I give <laughs> up. Okay, pizza is my weakness, guys. Every time I do a photo shoot, like yesterday, I did a long a photo shoot all day. Always, it's my bad habit. After I do a shoot, mm -hmm. I want like a bunch of pizza or chicken. <sighs> it stems from old habits, which were very unhealthy. That was like my. Um, not eating for a long time and then binge eating mm -hmm. very very bad health habits so unfortunately and i'm much better now i uh after i do a shoot though it's, it's like comes back to me like oh i want to eat something tasty yeah yeah so uh, pepperoni pepperoni man my my favorite pizza i think it would have to be uh in korea man i don't know I mean, I love pepperoni. Well, this is going to be an easy question. It's not an easy question because it depends on the mood. Like, I like, I like, um, like a good, good margarita pizza if I'm in that Italian mood. Ooh. A really solid margarita pizza. Gargonzola pizza with honey. Oh, okay. Yeah, she likes that. Mm. Um, that's not my favorite pizza, but it's good. I like, I mean, pepperoni is a safe bet for sure. Are you supposed I, I know, to live I know. I'm safely? like, I'm, I know. I'm making this question like way you, too complicated. There are certain risks you should take to live life to the fullest. I mean, I like in Korea. There's a like goguma pizza, which is like sweet potato pizza, and usually it's with like some sort of like sweet potato topping or like the actual sweet potato incorporated into the pizza, and I tend to like that. Yeah, and it, it'll usually have other toppings, but let's keep it simple. I'll say pepperoni. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Pepperoni, New Ooh. York style is really good too. All right, and then he also wants to know your favorite color, two of your favorite colors each. I like, um, 
Yours is cerulean. Cerulean. Oh, oh, like, oh, like the 64 too. Crayola crayon box crayon cerulean. Mm -hmm. That is one of my favorite colors. And then what else? Two colors for each of us? Mine is blue. Not dark blue. Not like Carolina blue. Like navy? Not navy. This like darker. Oh. Uh, more of a lighter blue, kind of along the lines of like more of a um, pastel-y type of blue. Actually, I have this blue T-shirt that I've worn in like a million of the videos. <laughs> yeah. Like that color blue, yeah, I love. Yeah, yeah. I really love that color. That's the blue. one that says like Melrose Drive, California. I don't know something. what it says, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, that and I would have to say like uh, either a dark gray or yeah, maybe a dark gray, mm. something like this. I really like that. It's very sleek and modern looking. Yeah, yeah, so those are my two colors. Okay, nice. I would say cerulean and maybe like that like that peachy light blush pink. Mm. I like that color. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Yo, JK, amazing camera quality. Thank you so much, sir. Just using my, uh, <laughs> my super expensive camera to stream. So, really appreciate that. Man, there's so many crazy things happening with the Postal Service. I can't believe that. This girl loves pizza. <laughs> Who's surprised? I love pizza. Hey guys, by the way, I hope you guys enjoy us just like chilling and talking, respond to comments. Yeah. Like Maybe people are sitting at this, their screen like, shut up, stop talking! Yeah, it, it's really fun for us. And, I love um, this. Yeah, and... We don't really have much of a schedule today, so we're just kind of chilling. Well, yeah. I don't know if you... I do have to do some things. Tomorrow I'm going to go get scuba certified. Yeah. So I haven't been on a holiday for a very long time. And um, Jejudo is still a safe place to visit. My friend lives there, or her family has like a home there. So they invited me to come out, and I thought, oh, I'll just go for a day. But then she wanted to get scuba certified. Certified. <laughs> so she asked me if I wanted to get it, and I said, all right. So this was kind of me jumping in, diving mm. in. <laughs> Do you like Puncheon or Gyocheon chicken? Gyocheon chicken. We've ordered that one before. Mm hmm. Yeah. Puncheon's okay. I think it's a little more expensive, though. Puncheon? Yeah. I mean, they're all like pretty pricey. <gasps> Pineapple pizza, no. Mmm, I like pineapple pizza. No. Mmm. I don't want like, to start a fight here, guys. There's nothing guys. more divisive <laughs> like nothing. than pineapple pizza. That's a or very, does pineapple belong on pizza? That's a very strong statement in the year of 2020. Or for foreigners <laughs> living in Korea, does corn belong on pizza? Because Korea city. loves corn for some reason and puts corn like on a lot of pizzas. <laughs> so I'm going to quote you. Yeah. Cedric Sky City 2020. There's nothing more divisive than a pineapple belongs on pizza. Yeah. But I'm team pineapple on pizza. No pineapple pizza. Thank you, Juno. Pineapples belong in a fruit bowl, not on <laughs> pizza. Some people love it. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Everyone's still on pizza. <laughs> That's fun. Cam Cam, I am not getting scuba certified. Because I was not invited to be part of this trip. Uh, it's true. This this is girl time. I was going for girl time. And then she wanted to get scuba certified. So, do I like swimming? Yes. Am I scared of deep water? Yes. Do I wish I could meet a shark? Yes and no. So this is my best opportunity. Man, you would not catch me anywhere near a shark, ever. And that's why I didn't ask you. Alright, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yo, I feel like it's getting a little brighter in here. Mm. Pineapple, or pizza plus pineapple plus Canadian bacon equal classic pizza. I feel like that would be a very good combination. But Canadian bacon is more like ham, right? Um... Well, I guess what we would in the States consider ham. I think I had Canadian bacon before. Like it's more, it's not like bacon bacon, like we have it in the States. It's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're not being as silly as I thought. Ernestine, Leah. Ernestine. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. you guys are doing great. Thank you so much I for guess people like the pizza. super chat. <laughs> yes, our debate on pizza. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Khan disagrees with you, though. Sky Cedrix, I'll have to disagree with you this time, my man. What? What? That's because Khan knows what's up. <laughs> it's all good. It's Khan all good. Has good taste. We're entitled to our own opinions. Canadian bacon has no fat, yet it's delicious. Oh, man. Yes, Canadian bacon is ham. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I tell you what, man. As soon as I can go to Canada, I've been wanting to go to Canada, specifically Toronto. Um, just, just to have some good old pancakes with some maple syrup. Mm. In Toronto? Yeah. Well, Toronto, because like it's so diverse and I know some people there. I'm not like close to people. So you're going to go there for the pancakes? Yeah. Is pancakes really a thing in, in Canada or is it just the syrup? Or is it called flapjacks? Really? Flapjacks? Yeah. I don't know. All right, any Canadians in there, let me know. <laughs> the reason I ask is because there's a song I played when I was DJing, and it's called Canadian Flapjacks and Sausages, I think. Oh. Flapjacks is American. Is Yo, it? Barbecue pineapple chicken pizza is awesome. That sounds so good. You know what? Wow, that sounds like the worst I really, ever. I really like barbecue, like if it's done well, like a barbecue chicken type of pizza, though. It's probably one of my favorites. Dipping in ranch sauce. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. It's great. I'm so sorry. I don't. I don't want to like, you know, <laughs> really <laughs> put down on anyone's personal flavors. Mm -hmm. But I cannot get behind that. Yeah, I really. Yeah, because I love anything barbecue. And many things that are barbecue, if you pair it with ranch sauce, it's really good. Let's see. Kimberly said hi. Enjoying the live so far. The last time you went live. I shared I was having to be assertive with my landlord. Oh, right. I remember. Mm -hmm. That situation has calmed down. I'm in Louisiana. Things are okay. Still in lockdown. Um, okay. Well, I'm glad that things are doing okay where you are. And I'm also really glad the situation calmed down, especially in the middle of like a lockdown and stuff. Um, and also on my side, things also worked out a lot better too. Mm. Didn't it? Yeah. I was able to talk to him very honestly. And now relationship is good and normal hmm. thank you guys so much for your advice that was very very encouraging when I was having a difficult time expressing or asserting myself in my career so it helped yo she's pretty like what do you call it she's pretty savage sometimes mm. but it's cool I I'm, like that I'm a little tough especially in the workplace gotta be mm. you think I'm tough sometimes I can be you're tough on yourself not really? on other people yeah, you're very, you're very gracious. I'm not gracious. When I said something gets done, it gets done. Yeah. yeah but you're, you're gracious. I guess that's a good thing. It is a good thing. Oh, that's cute. Canadian bacon. <laughs> I dated a guy from Canada. I called him my Canadian bacon. Aww. <laughs> was he a ham? <laughs> <laughs> he was, I guess. No, you, you know ham when you call a ham. Oh, you're such a ham. Yeah. Like, you're making jokes and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. I didn't mean to explain it. <laughs> now the moment's gone. I guess everybody knew that. All right, cool. Buffalo wing sauce pizza. I could get with that with blue cheese dressing. I can get with that. What's with the blue cheese? I love cheese, but not blue cheese dressing. Blue the cheese real, dressing is good with... The real blue cheese. With buffalo chicken wings. I like that. <laughs> and, uh, man, I used to work at Red Robin. For those of you guys, I think it's only in the States. But um, yeah, it's a burger chain that I used to work at. I was a server. And they used to have this blue cheese burger. So good. Blue cheese with Heinz 57 steak sauce. Together? Mmm. On the burger. So good. Mmm. So good, man. Mmm. <laughs> wow. People love pizza. Definitely. We just, <laughs> I didn't know people love pizza this much. Yeah, we just went on for like I'm 15 so minutes on pizza. I'm so sorry about this pizza talk. All right. Yeah, man. All right, so let's talk about um, let's talk about our recent experience on Korean TV. I don't know if you guys caught it, and I'll actually put the link in the chat in case you guys didn't. But Becky and I, we were on Korean TV, and it was in light of the recent incident of blackface in Korea. Now. Before we get into it, uh, we 
we just want to say that we're just going to have a conversation about it, maybe clarify a few points that we made in our video that we released last night or this morning for some of you guys in the West. And uh, yeah, we just want to talk about it because we just want to begin to have these discussions more frequently because we think that is going to be part of our contribution to really progressing these issues forward and bringing more cultural awareness. Uh, yeah, so we feel like it's our responsibility and we want to take it seriously. So we just want to have a conversation about it today. So we hope that you guys are okay with that. And uh, we want to keep it friendly, of course. Uh, but we're going to keep it real at the same time. Yeah. yeah, so we do ask that everyone, if you guys are interacting in the comments, to please be respectful. And uh, yeah, yeah, but hopefully this will be a fun, mm. fun conversation. Yeah. But yeah, we, um, we were invited well, actually, before we get into that, how many of you guys have seen the video that we just uploaded? Okay, everybody raise your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. It needs to be like a raise hand function <laughs> yeah, right. on YouTube. Doesn't Zoom have that? Like, raise your hand? I don't know. Yeah, because I know like, a lot of professors and stuff use that for like online classes. Oh. Yeah. Mm, clever. Yeah, so let us know if you saw the video. Yeah. Yep, saw it, saw it, saw it. I think it, it. Raised. to be part of the conversation, um, it is always <clears> good to have well, actually, it's necessary to have context. <laughs> so um, I would say what when we talk about uh, the blackface incidents and Sam Washiri and our time on TV, mind you, we're coming from specifically only our perspective. Yeah. And so just knowing like what happened and then hearing us talk about it, <clears throat> maybe you might feel like, wait, no, you're missing some points or something, something, something. Because we're just talking about our perspective, which we tried to put inside just that one video. So... That's the most important thing to know. That's the context. Right. And another thing is we are open to learning, obviously. So we're yeah. constantly growing and learning in this. So, uh, you know, on one hand, take what we say with a grain of salt, but mm -hmm. also um, take what we say and receive it with grace, <laughs> you know, and just uh, and just know that we're all in the same boat just trying to learn and do better. And mm. we're just trying to uh, stand up for what's right. So uh, with that being said... Yeah, we, we were... How do we get on the show? I don't... Yeah, okay. So here's how it started. Basically, you know, the whole incident happened. And I think a day after it happened, uh, with Sam Ochiri posting, I think his apology post, the day after, I remember uh, one of my old friends, and this is a... She's another fellow half Korean. She's currently living in Korea, uh, temporarily. And she reached out to me. I haven't spoken to her in so long, except like online here and there. And she was calling me and she kept calling me and I missed her calls and I was like, oh, Sam, this must be important. So, you know, I called her back and she was like, hey, look, uh, my cousin works at SBS. And if you guys don't know what SBS is, it's one of the biggest, it's a news, primarily, I guess, a news network in Korea on Korean TV. But they do a lot of different programming. They have like entertainment. Yeah, shows too. and they have different like uh, SBS channels, like mm. SBS Plus, and mm. blah blah blah. So, anyways, um, she's a producer on one of the shows, and it's one of the more popular shows that airs at night. And it's called, I guess, the English translation is Night of Entertainment TV or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, she was like, "Look, my cousin is looking for people to." Uh, talk about the whole recent blackface issue with Sam Ochiri mm. and she's really looking for someone quick because I think they wanted to air just a couple of days after and because like you know you want to strike while the iron's hot yeah. so she hooked me up with the producer and I was like okay cool and so I was talking to the producer the producer was like yeah have you heard about the incident I was like yeah well do you have any black friends it's funny how they say, do you have any black friends? Do you have any white friends? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I was like, well, uh, yeah, I've got some, some black friends that are living in Korea that I could ask if they want to participate. So that's how we got, um, you know, a panel discussion going. I brought maybe five people mm -hmm. uh, with me, including Becky, and she was representing the white voice. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I mean, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Like, just... If you look at it, I mean, from a distant point, it, of view. it makes the same amount of sense to me as it does for me to represent the black voices. But in a sense, it's still different. A little different, yeah. yeah. And so, anyways, long story short, um, we got the panel discussion together, and just a few days later, we went to the SBS studio, and 
we had a very like I was very impressed not only with the questions and the motivation behind the questions that were asked to us, but uh, we had a really good discussion. The panel was great. It was great, like just the insights and and uh, just to be able to to see what everyone thought of the whole mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. It was very encouraging. Very gracious. And so they had a big camera crew. There was literally like 10 or 12 cameras mm -hmm. and just people watching us as we discussed this. And the producer was asking us questions. She has really good questions. Um, and yeah, we ended up talking for, again, about an hour and a half, closer to two hours. And, you know, of course, they, they had to cut it down. So that was, that was the only like downside is mm -hmm. they had to cut it down to about five minutes. The segment was about five minutes long. So obviously... They needed those nice sound bites. Right. Because there wasn't much time. Right, and that's just how TV works. That's how programming works. Unless they wanted to make like a one hour special on this, like mm -hmm. they had to cut it down. And Becky and I, more so Becky, we were real, like pretty nervous with how they would represent us so and present nervous. us. Yeah. But considering the limitations of time and the way they edited it mm -hmm. and also the uh, potential for like language miscommunication mm -hmm. um, we think that they presented it pretty well considering yeah. there were things that were missing and there were a lot of things that we mentioned that were really good that they didn't air sure. and we could talk about some of those things here and we're also thinking about doing maybe a follow-up video where we get some of the same panelists together and we can talk about this in depth and I could just release that video on the channel. But overall, we feel like it was a good step forward. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very easy to vilify Korean TV or the producers or the show and be like, how come you didn't give justice to this topic? Why did you, why did you infantize, is that right, infantize it? Like make it so childish comparatively mm -hmm. to how extreme or severe the situation could have probably was to a lot of people um yeah we, we could do that it's true however right. um also recognizing in the whole grand scheme of things this is actually a, quite a big step forward right to bring um such a panel together on such a tv show as this and still offer airtime to talk about a subject that quite honestly like korea as a whole has just ignored so um that was really amazing to see and i think the thing that quite amazed me is that the hosts I mean nobody was very strong for or strong against yeah you know, they just are there to present things as they are um, still ended with just the statement like oh for like like multicultural multi ethnic families um, to avoid these kind of problems in the future then Hokshiri definitely Korea does need some changes in their education and then they just moved right. on so that still like really put me at um, a big ease when I heard that yeah, absolutely. And by the way, uh, Jody, thank you so much for your super chat. He says, how are you doing? Hi. We're doing great. Uh, we are just chilling on this Sunday afternoon for us here in Korea. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're just chilling, hanging out with you guys. I just posted the link to the actual segment because uh, I know a lot of you guys probably didn't see it outside of just what we posted on mm -hmm. our social medias. And this is from Kakao TV. That's the segment, the five minute segment that we were on. And so feel free to, to watch it. Now, the thing is, I don't think this works in every country, mm -hmm. um, but it does work in the States for sure because my mom was able to see it. And um, it works if you're in Korea, of course. So, yeah, you guys can feel free to check it out even now if you want to. It's pretty short. And, um, yeah, the broadcast is in Korean, but we all I think all of our sound bites were all in English, even though the interview was kind of conducted in mm -hmm. Korean and English. So yeah, um, yes, so you are very welcome for the link, and yeah, I mean, what else can we say about it? it yeah, we think it's a, like, like Becky said, we think it's a good step forward, and like they could have just brushed over the issue, or they could have had their own like agenda in presenting this, like they could have in a sense vilified us, mm. you know, so we were happy that they remained, I guess, as neutral as maybe they possibly could. And this is the problem with not only like just media in Korea, but like in the West too, like media can lean heavily mm -hmm. towards one side or another. So again, we're, we're thankful that at least there was this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people saw it. 
I mean, my mom, she told me that some of her friends mm -hmm. caught it, you know, and I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even tell my mom that it happened until the day after. Mm. She usually watches that show, actually, but <laughs> that night she did it. Yeah. And so I sent her the link. So yeah, she was very, very happy. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so it was, it was pretty cool. Like some of the questions they asked was like, how did we feel when we first saw the picture of the high school students in blackface? Mm. And do we feel like it was wrong? Do we feel like, uh, what are the questions that they ask? Like, um, if this had happened in a different country, would right. the response have been the same? Um, how did you feel when you saw Sam's apology post? Right. Um, what were some other questions? Um, Some of them were pretty specific too. Like, yeah. how would in Australia do you think they would feel about this if that, you know? So, can't track with all of them. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. So. But the questions were pretty non pointed. Like, they were, I would say, fair, fairly mm -hmm. asked. Right. And what was interesting is uh, we had mostly a panelist of, like, the friends that I brought were all from America. We had one guy from Rwanda. Mm hmm. And, um,. Australia. Australia, and then, um, so the Australian was, um, I mean, he wasn't white, mm -hmm. but he was from Australia, and then we had a white guy from the States, and then you from the States, I don't, I don't, yeah. the half white, <laughs> and uh, the rest were black. Uh -huh. And what was interesting is, they asked a question, you can see it in the beginning of the segment of, how many of you guys felt like, what was it? How many felt like it was oh, wrong? How many of you felt that this picture could become a problem? Right. And seven out of nine of us raised our hands. Yeah. And the two that didn't raise uh, their hands was the white guy from the United States and the black guy from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And so it was very interesting because the guy from Rwanda is from Africa and uh, we're all from the States. And so even though it's a very small sample pool, you're able to see just the, I guess, the difference of perspective from the guy who was from Africa, who is still black, versus all of us from the States. And, and we think that a big part of it is because of the historical context mm -hmm. of blackface in the States. Mm -hmm. you know, And that's oversimplifying it, of course, mm -hmm. but that seems to be the case. Because not only that, but also in this segment, you have these two, I guess they're starting to become famous. They're like these twin guys from, I don't know where, oh, but somewhere oh, yeah. from Africa. They're from Ghana, too. Oh, they're from Ghana? Yeah, and I think one of the twins said it was a problem, and the other one was like, well, I wasn't really offended, or mm -hmm. it's not really a problem. So, I guess it's more of an individual thing, too. Okay, um, can I just jump in really fast? Yeah. So, since this incident... Uh, and since the TV show, I have been searching through uh, Korean blogs and commenters. Um, and I'll go on Instagram and look for the hashtags in Korean, um, not English hashtags. Because I want to see how are um, the Korean public online responding to all of this. Mm. Even as more information comes out, even as more people choose one side over the other. Um, and there's a lot of remarks that do make me feel very cautious um, about making about making direct s statements as in like this is fact mm. about this situation mm -hmm. and uh, the thing that really like 마음에 걸렸어 like kind of got stuck in my heart sort of making me like feel ooh, not sure how I feel about that um, are some statements where people will say like this is a very um, especially American issue mm. and America has a mindset that they are a superpower that they are the world's peacekeeper right that they have a feeling like they can push their opinion of what is right and wrong on other countries and cultures and on one hand I totally agree that there can be a big power disbalance mm -hmm. between the US which is a world superpower versus some other countries so I also think that not only is there cultural differences involved linguistic cult differences involved personal historical difference involved I think there's also this added thing of like who are you as Americans to tell us this because you guys are always doing that Right, so it does. It does make me feel like before I can make any judgmenting statement, 
I really need to catch myself and am I also acting out of a bias that I am not aware of? Mm. So first and foremost, before I say like, Korea is wrong, US is wrong, I first need to check myself and really be like, out of what heart am I trying to make a moral statement here? Right. So I mean, it's like, I know it sounds like I'm tiptoeing around a lot of things, but in reality, I just want to check myself first. Yeah, and that was also how we wanted to approach the video that we made. Mm -hmm. Because I think, like, I could have easily created the video or made the video with showing all of my emotions about the situation yeah, because I kept it really cool, calm, and collected. But, mm -hmm. like, I have strong opinions about it that are my opinions, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we wanted to approach the video from a not so much from an emotional standpoint, nothing wrong with being emotional because mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's natural mm -hmm. and we should be emotional about it, but we wanted to be able to try to reason mm -hmm. with the situation and just figure it out from a macro perspective so mm -hmm. that we can actually have a conversation because yeah. one thing is like, if I, if I get heated, like Becky is really good with um, like, <laughs> like if, if we have a little disagreement, uh -huh. Becky is good with speaking more or less out of her emotion and more mm -hmm. with logic versus me. I can get a little bit more emotional. Mm -hmm. And her method is always better, honestly. No, I not. mean, like, in our context, like, because you're able to, like, reason with me and then, like, the things you say is right and you're not getting, like, overly upset or anything, whereas I might be getting a little upset and that clouds my judgment <laughs> or, like, I'm not able to communicate in a way that you're receiving it well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So... I think it was good for us to just remain we weren't neutral I mean we stated our opinion if you watch the whole video yeah. you can catch how we feel yeah. but we stated it in a way that it wasn't like we were angry because there's mm -hmm. gonna be enough of that anyway mm -hmm. you know when talking about this issue mm -hmm. but we wanted to be able to communicate in a way that people who may not understand or may not agree with our viewpoint would mm -hmm. at least listen at to it at least open that door right of discussion we all know when you're when you're in an argument with a friend or family member or a loved one and you start getting very upset and you have every reason to be upset that's the worst part when you know you have a reason to be upset and I'm right and I'm upset mm -hmm. but no matter what you say because your method of speaking is right. not getting in their ears then in the end what happens you clash your relationship can deteriorate and you're both filled with resentment towards each other right so we're trying to view this and communicate in a way that's like you don't have to agree with us Mm -hmm. You really might have your own strong opinions on this, and that's fine as long as we can talk it through and have these discussions. I really think that is so, so important. And the thing I realize more and more is that this is way bigger than me, way bigger than me trying to win over one person, right. trying to get my point across. This is so much bigger than just me and my personal feelings. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're we're just trying to have effective communication when dealing with this subject. Mm. Um, so now that we're on the live stream, I guess as it comes up, you know, I can I'll I'll show you guys mm. or be able to express to you guys how I really feel and maybe show a little bit more emotion, that's fine, but still we want to be level headed and be able to communicate because we feel like what is the what is the long term goal of this? We mm. want to progress the I guess we want to make sure that there is a greater cultural awareness when it comes to these issues, especially in Korea. Mm. But there's a way that you do it. And screaming and yelling at Koreans angrily doesn't work. We know it's never worked it's, anywhere. It, it's, not, it's just, yeah, generally not yeah. going to work, especially with a lot of people in Korea. Because a lot of Koreans, yeah. and I don't say this in a, in a belittling way, but yeah. a lot of Koreans are very, like, they're not going to receive that well. Mm -hmm. Like, they're very, what's the word? Who's going to receive anybody yelling at you that you're wrong? Who's right. going to receive that well? Right. Now, um, there are times where that is warranted, mm -hmm. for sure. But I don't think this is it because, again, there is a... And we got to talk about this. There's a there's a lack of understanding of the historical context generally. Now, I understand the argument of, uh, well, this has happened time and time again. Koreans should know by now. Yes, I agree. Totally agree. This is exactly what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. Coming with this mindset of like, I mean, if you really think about it from just the average Korean's point of view, telling Korean 
by now you should know how many times has this happened that is still that's still not a way of properly communicating and it's it obviously hasn't resolved anything right yeah yeah so like it's just better to try to get down to not you got to be on the same page and when communicating and so again this is obviously i'm struggling right now to even like articulate this um because it's it's difficult and i'm still learning but it's very understandable too like Mm -hmm. i hate i don't think there should be sides you're this side or that side i don't think there is however i can understand why some people would feel a certain way about this issue versus another people would feel about that issue as as totally understandable yeah so it's, it's very very difficult yeah i mean so i think one of the best ways to look at a situation like i shouldn't say one of the best ways but a mm-hmm. way to look at the situation like this is try to look at it outside in and look at it from a macro perspective mm-hmm. and try to understand um just why koreans are why Koreans reacted the way they reacted, mm. but also why a lot of black people reacted mm-hmm. the way they acted. Mm-hmm. I right? think you're right, yeah. Yeah, because as I made mention in the video, I totally understand the the reaction and the anger mm. towards Koreans mm-hmm. from a lot of black people. And I actually share in that, you know? But I'm also looking at it from a like just a realistic point of view of, and we may mention in the video, Koreans education curriculum in schools is not catered to going into detail about Western culture and even like the historical context mm. of like slavery and da 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 da. Mm. Would it be good that they do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it just doesn't. And the ev- the everyday Korean mm. isn't going online on the internet saying, hmm, I want to learn more about black culture. Mm-hmm. I want to learn more about slavery mm-hmm. um, and just what has happened in the past. Would that be good? Absolutely. But the reality is, they're not because they're on. They're in their own little world, and not little world, but they're in their own world. And if you just think about what a lot of Korean kids go through, they're going through school. They're taught their curriculum, and their main focus is to do well in school with what's presented to them. And they just have to study, 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 study what's presented to them so they can get into a good school. So they're they're not thinking like culturally or globally from that standpoint outside of really learning english which is required at this point in the uh i guess korean curriculum Mm -hmm. so from that angle i can understand Mm -hmm. why people may not understand yes Mm -hmm. there's also the element of blackface sometimes comes to the limelight in korea um but then you have to ask yourself how many people really even get involved in those situations in terms of like how many people even are even aware of blackface situations in Korea the average Korean we are when the headlines come out you know but what about the kids and the high schoolers are they really like Mm -hmm. even consuming that sort of information Mm -hmm. probably not do I think they should I do I really do but that's that was the angle I was trying to come from like so from that angle, with the particular high school students, mm-hmm. with the blackface photo, that's why I'm giving them, in particular, benefit of a doubt. Of they probably just did not know, and they didn't intend on offending people. They didn't know it was an offensive action to put on blackface. Do I think they were wrong for doing it? 100%. I'm going on record saying that. Mm-hmm. But they just probably didn't know it was wrong. So. Yeah. I'm coming from that angle now. I'll say one more thing. I know this is like very like, (laughs) so I'm sorry about that. (laughs) But this is what really ticked me off. Mm -hmm. There were some high school students that after that went viral with the whole high school students wearing the blackface, Mm -hmm. there were other high school students that recreated the meme and they wore blackface on purpose and they tagged Samuel Cherry. Mm to say, hey, look, we're supporting these kids and then we're sort of like just making fun of the whole situation. Mm -hmm. That is 100% wrong. And I think at that point, those kids need to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. How? I don't know in this Korean cultural context, Mm -hmm. but that is wrong. Because at that point, they knew that it was an offensive action, Mm -hmm. but they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. I I don't play with that. You know, I think that was wrong. And 
there should be some sort of, I don't know, um, not consequences, but there needs to be accountability for that. Yeah. It's just a big problem. I don't know if that makes sense, guys, and I probably didn't like articulate. That's why I'm very like cautious with my words because I don't want to be misunderstood. Maybe you could take over. Let well, me let me just <laughs> let me, let me well, just ask some coffee. I think it was very well said. Yeah. I'm thinking about multiple things. One, I'm thinking how incredibly difficult it is to try to speak purely on fact alone or or recognizing the situation exactly as it is without implicating your own past, your own hurts, your own feelings very hard to do that and doubly hard it is to try to put yourself in somebody else's shoes so it's understandable that people would get up in arms first to be like but don't you understand how i feel about it don't you know what that means to us because mm -hmm. it's very hard to get into someone else's shoes so that's i mean that's totally understandable right especially as it's a heated situation the other thing that i was thinking is like um um what was i gonna say <laughs> oh, okay uh, so I keep saying this is, we keep saying macro and, or uh, something bigger than us. It is hard to, to say because part of it feels like justice should be done. Right. There should be, you know, people should be punished because there's consequences for doing something wrong, whether you're aware of it or not. I accidentally crashed your car. So I still crashed your car, right. even though it was an accident. So there's still consequences. So that being said, though, in these kind of situations, when it comes to like racism, when it comes to human rights, yeah, we can, we always try to set laws and rules and, you know, you can't do that, you can do this. That's very hard to live by that concept. I, I personally do obviously believe in the law and rules, mm. but I believe that this is, this is bigger than that. And this is more about, do you value that human being? and that human's feelings and that person's experiences as much as you value your own. And unless we are able to view each other in that equal lighting, we are gonna consistently have these hurts happening to each other and always coming back with, but you hurt me, you hurt me first, you hurt me, mm -hmm. right? Don't you understand how much that hurt me? It's, it's so much bigger than just the incidents. It's more about, is that person equal in your eyes? Do you actually care about that person more than proving yourself as right. Right. And I'm speaking to both Korean people and to Americans as well, or anybody who's dealing with these kind of situations. Right. And it it really does. So I, I use the term in the video humbling. Like a lot of times, us black folk feel like we gotta humble ourselves. And what I meant, meant by that is we're constantly getting taking the blows. We're constantly taking the hit. Ever since ever since we came here, even today, we're still taking the humble road. Is mm -hmm. it fair? Absolutely not. Is it just? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, but I feel like, I feel like sometimes in certain contexts, we have to do that in order to progress the issue forward in an effective way in a context like Korea, mm -hmm. right? Like, we see the blackface incident and we're like, how many times we gotta go through this? Mm -hmm. How many times do we have to be insulted? Again, it's wrong, it's not just, it's unfair. But again, I'm trying to think, and you can feel free to disagree with me, that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like we have to look at the situation for what it is, analyze the situation, and then try to approach it in what's the most effective way mm -hmm. to make sure that the Korean people who are in violation of doing this action knows that it was wrong, that it was disrespectful, that it's hurtful, and hopefully making sure that doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. That's all That's all we're saying. Yeah. Now, I, I know that some people are on the camp of like, well, you know, we've been silenced for so long and we're just gonna rise up and revolt and if it takes even like drastic action, even to the point of violence, then so be it and i get that i get it i don't i don't personally think that i would want to take that approach here yeah right but i understand mm. so that's what i'm saying so i hope that you guys can catch my heart in that i'm not speaking against that or speaking down to that mm. i understand it because of the trauma as i mentioned in the video mm. that we have faced for generations and generations in the black community, mm -hmm. especially in the West, but I don't want to discount like the black community in other places. I mean, there too. 
there's that trauma that we're living with and we respond out of that many times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Out of anger or frustration. I get it. For our Korean listeners who might be on this live stream right now, we have a word called han, right? Han is a very Han is um, it's a very Korean concept of internalized bitterness and sorrow and anger and resentment from injustices done to us mm -hmm. that we could not fight back against. Um, mm -hmm. For example, perfect example right now is the feeling we have when we consider North and South Korea as the separation of the country. An injustice imposed on the Korean people that they could not do anything about. And so living with this anger and sadness and bitterness and resentment and all of those feelings all wrapped up somewhere inside of you. Now we, we see this Han expressed in Korean music and Korean poetry and theater. Han sori, right? Very sad things or just what can I do with it? And then yeah. despairing against fate or God or somebody who has pushed me down, right? Now I want to give some perspective to maybe our Korean listeners and viewers right now. Han, 그런 느낌 아시잖아요. You know that feeling of Han. Mm. And I would like to also say, I do believe a lot of black communities, especially in America and even European countries, have their own Han, have their own internalized trauma from things pushed down on them that they could not fight back against. 그러니까 그 한을 표현하기 위해서 to express this Han in any way they can. We've seen music, jazz, blues, spirituals, hip-hop. So much mm. has come out of this sense of Han. So maybe if we can't explain what happened in this exact situation with Sam Ochiri in the blackface, perhaps maybe you can sympathize with that feeling inside your heart i think that is more powerful than saying this was right and that was wrong right it's a mm. very good point and it's just it's just so it's so deep in the psyche and the the psychology of people this whole concept of han and it <sighs> yeah. makes sense like korean people have this sense of han and i'm trying to read through the comments and um you know trying to get caught up but someone mentioned you know um and this is a sensitive topic that I kind of wanted to bring up on the show, but I didn't because it wouldn't have been smart to, I, th I think. But like mm. the whole concept of the Japanese colonization, mm -mm. you know, Korea was colonized and actually what? Today is Liberty Day, right? Liberation Day? All day, all day. Oh, it was yesterday. Sorry. Oh, man. Today's uh, Sunday. That's right. In America, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So Liberation Day is like the celebration of uh, Korea's independence from mm. Japanese rule and colonization uh, because Korea was colonized by the Japanese and went through a lot of hardship mm. for a period of about 36 years. And so that's the most, I guess, recent huge example of maybe some of the, I guess, reasons for Koreans Han or mm. that deep rooted mm. resentment that sort of passed down. There are other like examples of that, but uh, you know, that Korean, you know, people are like, well, Koreans should be a little bit more empathetic because they understand that even though it wasn't as let me not say that it was horrible it was horrible mm -hmm. i don't want to compare it to slavery those mm -hmm. are two different things mm -hmm. but maybe that's the topic that koreans can maybe understand slavery in a sense like the, yeah the oppression yeah you would think that maybe they could have more empathy because they went through that mm -hmm. and I don't know why that that is that they maybe don't see it through the that lens i don't know why but like you would think that yeah. maybe that could be an avenue to which they can understand like mm. the oppression of mm -hmm. of a lot of black people mm. but I, I don't know why that is so i don't have anything to like say for or against that but i think part of it is also economic standards mm. you know i i really do believe all countries and korea especially we see now really puts down on people groups and countries if they feel Korea is economically doing better than them. Right. That's why you see many Southeast Asians are um, really treated poorly in Korea because Korea as a whole views themselves as higher. Right. So, and we see this love for white skin, right? For, yeah. for um, exoticizing fair features. So on the opposite end, of course, if you're not super fair or white, then oh, then you're not as at that level. I think that has some, yeah. you know, play in that as well, this economic standards. Right. And also just to tag on to that, mm. um, 
you know, a lot of Korean people, and this is a negative of about Korean society. Mm. Um, and I say this humbly. I don't say this to belittle. It's just it is what it is. Mm. That Koreans are even, you can't be racist towards your own people, but they discriminate within their own ethnicity. Mm. You know, so especially with economics, the higher on the economic ladder you are, the more discrimination you tend to have towards those that are lower, mm. those that are poor. If you guys saw Parasite, that is a perfect example mm -hmm. of, and that's one of the things that the director really wanted to uh, express, as he does in a lot of his films, mm -hmm. is that economic imbalance. So even Korean people within Koreans, they can be discriminatory towards each other, either because of that, well, ma mainly driven by the economics. Even there, you know, you never see on Korean TV, you mm. never see on Korean TV dark-skinned Koreans. Mm. There are darker-skinned Koreans. Tem t <laughs> than you. Yeah, you no, mean. seriously. <laughs> in my family. Right. Yeah. And they tend to live in the rural because a lot of them work outside. You never see them on Korean TV. No. But because Koreans have this obsession with lighter is better, mm. as a lot of cultures and countries mm. do. Is it wrong? Absolutely. Mm. I don't agree with that. It's, it's logically stupid. Like, what makes you better because you are... Sorry, this is the real me yeah. that you're getting. <laughs> There's and nothing that makes you better it's, it's, because it's really dumb. of how you look. Right. Yeah. But my point is, like, Koreans, um, even within themselves, can be discriminatory mm. based off of the economics primarily. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like Koreans within themselves are even perfect with each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this is just an issue. And don't even get me started on the United States. I won't go there. It's clear that, you mm -hmm. know, obviously there's a lot of like racial issues there. So from that angle, it's just a problem. It's a human problem. It's a human heart problem. It really, really you know what is. I mean? Yeah. And that's why it's impossible to look at somebody else and and judge them fully and and very truthfully because we don't ever, ever understand or know a person's full thought process in emotion and history and experience that leads them to say a certain thing or act a certain way and uh, I this is kind of what I said at the beginning of the live stream first off is I, I really want to always just check myself first where am I coming from why am I saying this am I do I have some ulterior bias or motive that I, for responding the way that I do that should first and foremost be our action before taking any stand or or against somebody because we first must fully, truly understand why, why am I doing this, mm -hmm. you know? Because it is a heart issue first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so let's let's get caught up on some of the comments. Ooh, let's you see. guys this is, have been on fire. This is yeah. Chat. This is this is a tough issue, but um, again, I'm not excusing any sort of racism. What I'm just trying to figure out is my role in really progressing the cultural awareness forward mm. so that this over time can be minimized and you know I don't know if it'll ever be eradicated mm. you know this concept of racism and classism and, mm. and all of that I don't think it ever will um, but I think that we can make take steps forward in, in bettering that and here's another thing for a lot of you guys to think about if you haven't already is you know we look at Korea and we we see where Korea is now. We see that Korea is a, you know, obviously an enter entertainment, a global entertainment powerhouse. We see that uh, Korea is now a top player economically with economic power. Um, but if you really think about it, Korea just 60 years ago, when my mom was born in 1951, she was born literally in the middle of the Korean War. Mm. So right after the Korean War uh, was over, I guess it's not technically not over yet. Yeah, Armistice technically. Now. But um, you know the the fighting and all of that stopped in the fifties. Korea was one of the poorest countries mm. in the world. Now think about this. Just think. Just try to think logically about this. And up until that point, prior to because the Japanese came in in the early nineteen hundreds, and then by the time the Korean War was over, no more Japanese rule. Mm -hmm. Right. So prior to the Japanese coming in, Korea was always just a country that minded their own business. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a rep historical reputation that Korea was a country that always minded their own business mm -hmm. and here and there was, um, I guess, infiltrated and taken over. So 
so there's this sense of like we've always been just very peaceful minding our own business but because of our location either chinese came in the japanese came in over periods of time and we didn't do anything to them we didn't start wars with other countries mm. so you have this sort of country that's always been like we do us y'all do you mm. so this sort of mindset is ingrained in the korean i guess psyche and the korean culture so going back to the 50s poorest country ever very little exposure to the outside world to foreigners yeah. outside of whoever came in to take over like the japanese so oh uh -huh. you have korea from the 50s to 60s to 70s building up mm. a very rural type of country into building cities and be becoming very like westernized in many ways like mm -hmm. with the architecture building the cities back up building the country back up building morale back up you have Korea doing that just in a period of just a couple of decades. So you went from the poorest country, one of the poorest countries in the world, to one of the richest in a matter of just a few decades. Mm. That's quite amazing. Mm. Now, another thing to think about is Korea didn't open its borders until around the late 80s. So what I mean by that, there were periods like they, they had the soldiers that were, you know, the U.S. soldiers uh -huh. that were in Korea. So that was their main exposure to like foreign culture, which they were influenced a lot. That's, that was the point I wanted to bring up. Okay. You can finish first. Sure, sure. So you have that. But then in the 80s, I mean, here and there you have like people from the outside coming in, maybe working for Korean mm -hmm. companies here and there, or uh, maybe they're reporters from the outside, foreign reporters. But outside of that, Korean was so freaking homogenous. You think Korean is homogenous now. I mean, back then it was just all Korean. Korean culture, that's all they knew. Mm -hmm. No internet, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you have just this explosion of technology that started happening, mm. and then Korea opens their borders just a couple of decades ago. Now foreigners are starting to come and live. Korea has not had this access to other outside cultures in the way they do now for a long time. Mm. So if you just think logically about that and try to take a macro approach to mm. it, you begin to realize, wow, I, I can see why, one, they have the history of the colonization and they have the history of this... Um, just there's being this hermit country a country to itself not having exposure to other cultures and then you go from that in just a matter of decades having to be you know now they're opening up to a whole new world of foreign cultures and uh you know western culture that this is all new for them you know what i mean and so you have you bring so now we're up to where we are now in 2020 where mm -hmm. korea is a global player. I think what's happening is Korea's playing catch up in We're a lot of areas. Growing pains. Growing pains. They're playing catch up um, with now being culturally aware. They're playing catch up with learning about foreign cultures and what's right, what's, I guess, what's respectful, what's disrespectful. That's why you still have Koreans who are still shocked when a foreigner can speak Korean. Mm -hmm. Like it's. Like it's some magic language that only ethnic Koreans can speak and like whenever a foreigner does it, it's like they're like superheroes. You know what I mean? Because it's still that mindset that's ingrained. And so I think Korea is playing catch up in those ways. And I don't mean that in the bad way. I mean that actually in a good way. It's quite impressive. So that's why I feel like we're still having these issues and these gaps in like certain areas even though Korea is so far advanced. Did that make sense, y'all? <laughs> I, I wasn't planning on saying all that, so my thoughts weren't super organized, but hopefully that makes sense. Okay, it was, you can... <laughs> it was very good. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, there's, I think, there's a couple things I wanted to just toss into here. Mm -hmm. One, we're kind of like, something to give perspective is understand that Korea as such a homogenous country, and then also in the middle of intense poverty, and the separation of North and South Korea. Who are the first foreigners really to come to Korea and stay here long term besides Japanese occupation? American soldiers. So very yeah. different from Korean culture, look different from Korean people, speak a totally different language. And they came in in Korea and from the Korean point of view as foreign invaders. Right. Because of the US's part that they played in the Korean War our country was separated. 
So how could Koreans look so kindly on Americans at that time? And even today, you will see an anti-American sentiment because of the soldiers and the military presence here. So that exists simultaneously as Korea is learning to have these multicultural families and learning to uh, open their borders and our population is becoming more mixed, right? And even we know through history of half Koreans in Korea, it's been very terrible and sad, mm -hmm. most of it. And right. even today, people are struggling to find where they belong in right. this society. So <sighs> bearing all of that in mind, I mean, you it doesn't excuse behavior, but it can right. help explain and That's understand. Right. right. And so to be honest, like I said in the video, I didn't learn about blackface until I came here and this incident happened. That is not a shame on Korea. That is a shame on the U.S. Right. For this to be part of U.S. history, and I didn't even learn this, and even more so, this is still something affecting a majority, not majority, but a number of Americans in the U.S. Mm -hmm. still today. And how is that not being taught? That infuriates me. Right. So how then can I look at Korea and be like, you guys need to understand blackface when I'm not even taught in the United States. Right. So before we're pointing fingers at anybody, this is what I'm saying. We need to look at ourselves first. Right. Because I think very easily I could have looked at this and be like, okay, people calm down. Like, it's just cosplay. I could have right. easily done that. Right. Oh, my heart is beating now because I'm just, it just makes me so mad at the injustice of it. Right. And so, like, there's... Where's the lie in that? You know what I mean? Like even the U.S. doesn't have it together, and this is where it happened. You know, um, I didn't learn. I didn't. I grew up. I didn't learn about blackface to the extent that I should have in the states. It was mentioned at some point when I was young in mm. the curriculum, but I think that that it was just glossed upon. Mm. You know, so at least I I understood that. Plus, me having the history of being black and just like studying black history you know that that is a part of um mm. you know the the historical story but in a lot of history books even the <laughs> oh my gosh and we're not going to get into it at least not right now i mean a lot of the history books gloss over slavery like some of the slaves are even happy to be slaves like that is the narrative that was changed in the history and now that we are able to go back and really understand and analyze how history really was, we know that that's all BS. It really is. Mm. Um, so yeah, even us in the West, specifically in the United States, and we say United States because that's where we're from, mm. we're not even properly taught. And that is that is a freaking shame. Mm. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, so from that angle, it's it's it helps you to have a little bit more understanding why maybe Korea isn't as well versed as we would like for them to be. Again, we're not excusing the mm -hmm. action. It doesn't make the action right. It doesn't give anybody a free pass, mm -hmm. but it helps us to understand where maybe the offender is coming from and then that way we can deal with it from that perspective instead of, you know what I mean, instead of just like being upset and angry mm -hmm. and they not knowing why are they like being so upset and angry. Here's a good thing. I think a lot of Korean people are starting to really learn um, why it's wrong. Like, I think in the past, um, and I'm going to make an assumption here, in previous blackface situations, perhaps when those situations came up, even in the media, I don't know if they went into detail with why it's wrong, why mm. black people are so hurt and offended and disrespected by it. It's hard. Maybe to... maybe like a lot of Korean people just kinda of thought, oh, they just they're just upset and offended that we're imitating them and trying to look like them and imitate them and they're mm. offended. That's just the surface layer. Whereas this situation now, I think now we're more focusing on, well, let's go deeper with why we're offended and disrespected. Mm. And why it's different from them like if, if someone was to put on white face mm -hmm. for example why it's different because i think in the past korean people would be like well what's the difference i guess black people are just more sensitive about that mm -hmm. there's a historical reason why mm -hmm. we're sensitive about it mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah and by the way just want to say sangi thank you so much oh, for the super that. chat thank, you. thank mm -hmm. you so much uh really means a lot mm -mm -mm. but um yeah oh man 
<laughs> so let's uh, let's see let's see what you guys are saying. Yeah, actually, you guys um, really a lot of great conversation happening here. Mm. Um, yeah, it's hard to catch up. It's so it's so very good in here. Hmm. Mm hmm. Let's see. I mean, again, that's why this whole situation is so layered and nuanced. And again, my belief is in order to tackle these sort of cultural issues, mm. the most efficient, well, the most effective way is to understand the history of both sides because I think a lot of people don't understand the history of Korea mm. and the history of how they were and maybe what they were feeling on a macro level you know what I mean mm -mm -mm. whereas because we want to learn more about Korean culture and history we've looked into that and we've been studying that plus we know that through our mothers for you know for mo much of our lives so we're able to try to see it from that perspective mm. but especially me I'm able to see it from the black perspective too so I think I have I guess I don't want to say an advantage but I have that that I guess privilege to be able to like try to understand both mm. and I think that helps me to reason a little bit better mm -mm -mm. and remove some of my emotion out of it even though I am emotional and I do have my strong opinions about it mm -mm -mm. yeah I'm, try I'm trying to to see because we have you know a couple like Korean comments in here as well sure and I'm wondering, like, even though we already throughout this whole talk have been discussing, so I'm not sure, like, how to, like, wrap up <laughs> in a quick statement, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the most important thing is beyond history, beyond what you learned, what you didn't learn, beyond governments and all of that, and even beyond the color of your skin. Is just seeing each person for the human that they are and recognizing you and me are the same mm -hmm. and I don't want to hurt you even if it wasn't willful and since now I know that you're hurt then I should make amends right mm. I think that's right that's the right thing to do mm. right so mm -hmm. for for the for our Korean mm. viewers 개인적으로 이렇게 생각합니다 결국은 저희는 뭐 외국인, 한국인, 흑인, 백인, 흑 그런 거 외에는 저희는 인간이잖아요. 그래서 인간으로서 서로한테 상처 주지 않고 그냥 이해해 주려고 하고 같이 배우면서 같이 서로한테 배우면서 내가 만약에 너한테 상처를 줬잖아요. 그러면은 어 아프다는 마음을 이해해 주고 제가 뭐 상추 주려고 했던 거는 아, 아니었지만 이제는 상추 됐으니까 책임져야 된다고 생각하거든요. 그래서 인간으로서 서로 그렇게 보고 서로한테 배우면서 같이 더 좋은 사회를 만들었으면 좋겠습니다. 네. 흑인이든 백인, 백인이든 한국인이든 그거 상관없이 인간으로서 그렇게 서로를 봐야 될것 같다고 그렇게 생각합니다. Yeah. That's that's very good. So again, that was more directed towards the Korean mm -hmm. uh, listeners here. Um, let let me go through some of the comments. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Nobody but God <laughs> says uh, it's crazy how in different parts of the U.S. I earned I learned about blackface growing up in the South. Mm. Just like I've told other people, the different parts in the U.S. isn't getting the Black History lesson. Mm -hmm. Clearly, yeah, that's very true. And that is a problem. Um, again, she never got that lesson. I did in, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, in a very watered down way. Mm -hmm. So I had to do my own research. So that's very true. Um, also, JK says, the difference is ignorance in the US is intentional. Mm -hmm. I would have to agree with that on a sy systemic, uh, I guess, way. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. History is intentionally whitewashed. 
Korea attempts to be global now. They need to do the research about why black fans of Korea feel offended. Mm -hmm. I want to address that because I 100% agree with you. You know, I was thinking, um, what was it? I think we were doing the hip hop episode yeah. on the Happy Project podcast maybe about two months back. And I just thought, I was like, you know what? Because Korea is now a global player and they became a global player in different sects of the economy, mm -hmm. uh, I guess the global economy, like quite recently. Mm. Yes, I agree. Like at this point, there needs to be that sort of uh, research and development and understanding different cultures now, which I think Korea is doing. But again, they're they're catching themselves up. And I was thinking, especially in the entertainment, because there's so many global fans with mm. K-pop dramas and stuff like that, that there needs to be an intentional training mm. and. I'm going to use this in the American sense of the word education. There needs to be an educating or just a learning about other cultures, especially with like black, black culture mm. and history. Because so much of the entertainment in music is, is birthed out of hip hop, mm. birthed out of, that's how K-pop started, was mm. Hoteji, mm. was totally hip hop mm -hmm. and sampling. Mm -hmm. So... I think there needs to be some sort of training or I don't want to say curriculum, but there needs to be like an awareness, a cultural awareness. Even if you got to hire somebody like SM or JYP or, you know, any of these companies needs to hire an in-house <laughs> black person, you know, or a team to really educate the higher ups and all of the, the trainees and the performers, mm -hmm. the producers, everything on the history of not only hip hop but like black history because that's all tied in even mm -hmm. to the music it's all tied in mm -hmm. that's why I mentioned on that podcast uh, a lot of you guys are probably Jiko fans or Zico mm -hmm. um, who's a popular entertainer here in Korea how in one of his videos like I have a bone to pick with him because you know <laughs> one his his I keep going to this music video tough uh -huh. cookie uh -huh. um, if you watch the video he, he has his act, this character. He's acting like he's really tough. Mm -hmm. And it's a hip-hop type of song. He's He's got girls twerking in the video. Actually, I saw that, and I was like, what are they doing? Yeah, it was <laughs> like, very cringy. And you read the comments, everyone's so talking bad. about those girls. Yeah. <laughs> so so anyways, but the thing is, he's appropriating, in my opinion. He's appropriating hip-hop culture. Mm. He's got the Confederate flag on one of his outfits in one of the scenes on his, on his jacket. Mm -hmm. And... From my understanding, I think, and I have to, you know, you can fact check me on this, but I think he actually, because he was called out for that, I think he apologized for it because he didn't know. And that's the problem. He didn't know. Mm -hmm. So now that Korea is such a global player, they need to not make those mistakes. And the only way for that to happen is there to, to be a focus on cultural awareness and mm -hmm. education in that context, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, we're because not saying... Because we're becoming a global... Korea has so much potential. Korea is so... Right. I really believe Korea as a country and as a people group are very smart, hardworking people. We have seen how in this history, Korea has advanced so much. It's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing and very respectable. Now Korea has this platform, you know, Hallyu or K-pop, mm -hmm. or, or even in the political sphere. Korea is becoming more outspoken and has a voice. How are we going to then show ourselves to the world? We, right. This is such a crucial time. That's, I, really, I really believe it is a crucial time. So like, even I said it in the video, even if, you don't, <laughs> even if you don't care, let's say you just don't care, and you're like, racism, shmeishism. Still. If you want to have a position of leadership and respect on the world playing field, mm -hmm. then you need to care. 100%. Hmm. Right. Real quick. Ola bis, Ola bisi, cuckoo. I hope I said that correctly. Thank you so much for the super Thank chat. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's great to have just you guys here, yeah. part of this conversation. That's so meaningful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, th I do agree, JK. Just going back to your comment that... Um, that needs to happen mm. um, from a standpoint of why wouldn't you want 
to be a little bit more culturally aware. Mm -hmm. And I say the same thing for us in America because a lot of times we have this uh, savior type of complex, like we're the greatest nation in the world, we're the best. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you have that mindset, I mean, sure, fine. Like, I don't think they're, I don't think America is any better than any other country and from a standpoint of like just a human value, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I think America, we still need a lot of education. Mm -hmm. I need a lot of education. <laughs> I need a lot of education. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know or understand a lot about other Asian cultures. I'm obviously understand about Korean culture. But outside of that, mm -hmm. um, I know very little about other cultures. So I could easily offend in the same way mm -hmm. right now. You know what I mean? So um, for me, I need to also be a little bit more researched, mm -mm. which that is one of my goals moving forward is to understand different cultures, especially if, mm. you know, we're on this platform on YouTube and we're talking about culture mm. and race. Like, I think that would be a very beneficial thing. And we have viewers from all over the world and we really appreciate you guys. I never want to be in a position where mm -mm. I make you feel disrespected ever, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, I, I speak from a standpoint of I need to be you know, more well-versed and culturally aware mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. so. We got a good comment from um, 예고편 절이장. So, uh, I'll, I'll just 그냥 영어로 한번 통역할게요. Says basically like, um, doesn't matter what your, your will was, if you had hurt the other person, I think that you should apologize to them. You shouldn't say like, oh, whatever, or you're just playing a victim. And uh, says that a lot of people in Korea speak that way. You know, but in this person was saying, my mom is black, and so I'm speaking through that mm, reasoning. Mm -hmm. So, this this person is also half Korean, who is mm. explaining on the Korean side. Yeah. And I really, <laughs> 동감합니다. 네. Right. Mm -hmm. And so many, so many good comments, man. Yeah. JK it says I should get paid to consult these major media companies yeah. on what's hip and what's not. Oh, is this Dewey? Yo. Dewey. Mm -hmm. Dewey. Oh, I need you. I need you. Yo, I, <laughs> I would, yeah, man, I would love to consult. Like, uh, that's the other thing, and we won't get into it now, but, you know, Becky and I were going to be putting a focus mm -hmm. on music and creating music. You know, me more on the production side, her more on the artist side. But if we get the platform, uh, I'm definitely open to doing that. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And... That's one of the reasons why we're starting to talk about these issues now so that, one, we can just get better at articulating it. Mm -hmm. And two, I made mention before, like an hour ago in the stream, <laughs> that we're trying to like really increase and improve our Korean mm -hmm. to be able to talk about these issues mm -hmm. from a native level standpoint. Mm -hmm. And that way we can speak with all the correct nuances mm -hmm. and we're able to communicate without any barriers yeah. on these issues. Whether so, so here's the thing. It's great that we were on Korean TV, mm -mm. but the fact that we spoke English because we're more comfortable with that and we can articulate ourselves much better in English, especially with a topic like this. Mm -mm. That's great, but how much better would it be if we're able to speak Korean and do it justice with mm -hmm. these topics? Mm -hmm. So, Becky and I are really going to focus on that. That way, we can begin to uh, speak in a way that a lot of Korean people can understand without the language, you know, complications, mm -hmm. uh, as we saw with Sam's post. And again, I'm not blaming Sam. I, again, I said in the video, I agree with him. And I don't think me personally, from my standpoint as an American, mm -hmm. as someone who understood both his English posts and Korean posts, mm -mm -mm. I totally agree. But uh, perhaps there would have been a better way for him to to address the Korean people in that post in a way that they wouldn't have gotten so up in arms about it. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah, so we definitely want to like speak to the, the people of Korea in Korean about these issues. Yeah, and I'm just not going to respond to some of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for leaving these messages. Attack and something I want to also emphasize is I hope nobody thinks that we're trying to dance around how we really feel because of diplomacy or anything like that. We are not ambassadors. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but these are truly just the way we are thinking about this and how we can express it and keeping in mind who we are talking to. 
because communication is two-way street and if that person doesn't understand then we're not communicating you know mm -hmm. so it benefits nobody so that may be why like of course we are cautious with our words of course um as i believe everyone should be mm, that's that's it yeah mm. yeah but i'm <laughs> i'm very excited to like i'm very excited to really begin to focus on a lot of these issues because from a youtuber's standpoint on this channel like I've never really skated around some of the issues regarding race and multiracial, uh, multicultural relationships and the story of my parents, the story of me and talking about, you know, addressing racism in Korea, at least partly on this channel. Um, but I think now I feel a little bit more of a, I guess you could say a burden or a responsibility to address it even more and to do it in the most effective way that I possibly can. Uh, now, especially with Becky here, and she's wonderful in articulating these things as well, because I don't see too many people doing it. And so there is a need, I think, for us going deeper. Because I can easily, and I've purposefully avoided making like those, I guess, videos like, oh, my racist experience in Korea, and just ranting about it. Nothing wrong with that in and of itself. I'm not knocking that, right? But for me and for us, I feel like it's more beneficial if we really put in the time, do the research, and try to figure out how to articulate it in a way that more people can receive it and it actually does something instead mm -hmm. of like causing clicks and making a viral video. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I want a lot of people to see the videos, of course. I'd love for the videos mm -hmm. to go viral. <laughs> Um, but that's from an angle of I want more eyes to see it. The more eyes see it and listen to the message, the better. So I'm just very excited and also nervous in a good way to step into this role of, okay, let's bring, let's play our part in bringing more cultural awareness, you know, mm -hmm. Not in many different angles on these issues with racism in Korea, but also like making or normalizing interracial couples and relationships which is why we like to make these videos you know mm -hmm. um just to show people that it's a thing and it's possible and it it works you mm -hmm. know and to give people hope also one more thing 지금 보고 계시는 한국 분들이 여기 그 채팅 하고 계시잖아요 so maybe some people are seeing some of the korean chatting here uh, and chinese and Chinese. Dexter. <laughs> 네, 좋은 말씀을 많이 남겨주셔서 감사합니다. 네, 두이 방금 하신 말씀은 어, 저도 동의하는데 어, 그런 mm -hmm. 말을 하고 싶었던 거죠. 네. Yeah. 두, 두 서로 존경하고 서로의 문화를 이해하려고 저희도 노력하고 있습니다. Mm -hmm. 그래서 모든 사람들은 그런 식으로 인간으로서 서로를 이해했으면 앞으로는 이런 문제가 생기지 Right. What's up, Elijah? Mm -hmm. Says, hey, Sadie. Good to see you, man. JK, yeah. I, I, I thank you for that comment. Um, you know, there might be other YouTubers out there, I don't know, but, you know, we're not trying to really compare ourselves to people, mm -hmm. so we just hope that we can really just use our platform. So, and we appreciate the support from all you guys, too. Yeah. Yeah. Kimberly, thank you so much for that encouragement. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a very meaningful live stream, I think. Mm -hmm. mm. Probably the most meaningful yet. I mean, yeah. all the other ones are definitely meaningful. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you guys haven't seen the video that we released, um, just last night or this morning, depending on where you are. Uh, definitely check it out. It's the longest video I've ever released on this channel. 31 minutes. <laughs> so don't let that scare you. Uh, we had a lot to cover. We yeah. actually wanted to cover more. And I cut out like, I don't know, a good amount. <laughs> All videos are like that. We say we say this much, we have to condense it. Yeah. You know why? It's because the YouTube algorithm. Because YouTube algorithm is too long and people don't watch it. And they see the videos. <laughs> Yeah, but um, <laughs> I think hopefully you guys will find value in that. Yeah. Let's see. 그리고 저희도 앞으로 지금 
자막 한글 자막을 넣는 게 사실은 시간 진짜 많이 걸리거든요. Yeah. 그래서 그거를 한국 사람들이 의견을 관심이 없어서 안 넣는 거 아니라 그냥 저희는 시간이 없었기 때문에 요즘 좀 힘들었거든요. 그래서 앞으로는 비디오 비디오에 저희는 자막을 넣을 예정이에요. Yeah, so just giving that out, letting people know that we're planning to put Korean subs in our videos. Right. That's the intent. Right, and I think the best way for us to do that is to have the funds to be able to pay someone to do that. <laughs> I know, right? That would because be it takes so long, especially a video like what we just released. That would have yeah. taken hours and hours. <laughs> so I think it would be better. So that's that's basically what we're waiting on is yeah. to like. <laughs> to be able to pay for someone for every video mm -hmm. to be able to do Because it's not just subtitles. the translating itself, it's putting it actually it's in the video it. too. Oh man. 그러니까 진짜 시간도. Right. And we, and we know that <laughs> like a majority of you guys are okay with English, uh -uh. but we do want Korean subtitles. I used to do that. I used to pay for it. Like if you, like a lot of my videos from about a year, maybe two years ago, um, I would have subtitles in them. but. You know, it gets pretty costly. So, so yeah, we're we're definitely planning on doing that, and mm -hmm. it's not the best use of our time if we do that because that's going to slow us down a lot with mm -hmm. everything that we have going on. Yeah. Um, not to say that it's not important, but we just need to hire someone to do that. Yeah. 그리고 여기 OMG 구독 해주셔서 감사합니다. 아 oh, 감사합니다. 앞으로 좋은 콘텐츠 많이 만들어 드리도록 할게요. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's the subtitles, man. It takes me so long. Ah, oh, it takes me so long. Yeah. You know, on the Happy Project, we have Korean subtitles there, except for podcast videos. You guys don't understand how many hours I put into that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it takes so long to make. Yeah, these, lots man. of mental energy too. Because you're like, you did yeah. the filming, and then the creative, and then the editing, and then the interviewing, and writing, and then transcribing, and then putting it in. Yeah. Lots of time goes into these videos. I enjoy it though. We enjoy it and find meaning. Hmm. 의미 있는 일이라고 생각해요. Mm -hmm. Yo, I, it's crazy. Like, most of you guys just kind of stayed <laughs> this whole time. That's awesome. <laughs> Sci Fi George OMG. says, Hey guys, always good, good to see, see us. Though. Very good topic. You're doing a lot of good stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so I just really like. I, I, I know that this maybe sounds kind of left field. Always, I really want to check myself, and I don't mean this in a putting down way. I never, I never, ever, ever want to reach the point where I'm like, oh, so many people think I'm right, therefore I'm right. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I really want to make sure I understand. Right. Mm. Yeah, which I think is good. Mm. And the thing is, views and perspectives can change yeah. as you learn and grow, and. We're willing to obviously admit that, mm -hmm. and we're not saying we're right. We're trying to be, but there might be things that we can grow in. Mm -hmm. so. You you read the comment from OMG. She what? says that we are very well fitted together. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see. AJ says, I know there are a lot of Koreans who do care and want to do what is right regardless of negative practices, sure. which is absolutely true. Absolutely true. I watch Lily Petals, big fan of Lily. Um, <laughs> Slice and Rice, big fan of them too. Yeah. Brandon the model. You know Brandon the I model. I know him personally, yeah. yeah. I run into him a lot. Cool, yeah. Slice and Rice, we're going to get a collab with them mm. if we could ever go to the States. That'd and be cool. Lily Petals, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Actually, so Lily, the last time she came to Korea... She reached out to me. She was like, I'm in Korea for like, I think two weeks oh, or yeah? something like that. And you remember she, she messaged me and she oh, was like, right. we should like, um, you know, yeah. try to do a video. Yeah. But we, <laughs> we never made it oh. happen. So that was my fault. But I think at that point, Popsan, who's one of the oh, um, like big YouTubers here, he's a mm -hmm. French YouTuber. Um, he got a chance to mm -hmm. collab with her which during that trip, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. You know what's also cool? Maze Lee mm. uh, likes the Happy Project. Yeah, yeah, Maze Lee. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, if you don't know who Maze Lee is, they're a uh, black wife, Korean husband, Korean American husband couple mm -hmm. with a billion kids. 
and they <laughs> live in the states. <laughs> ah, yeah. I didn't even think about a billion kids. So check them out, Maisley. Uh -huh. Really cool. Yeah. Oh, you guys. I feel so like. I'm sorry. I woke up really early and I was hungry and very emotional this morning because of my uh, <laughs> niece's uh, chatur first birthday. <laughs> so emotional now because of all the nice mm. conversations here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm. Maisley, I guess uh, <laughs> a billion kids. Kids are billion kids on you. <laughs> no, they have, okay, so. See how many? They have seven kids now, and then they just released a video talking about, like, Alina wants an eighth one. <gasps> Maisley on a YouTube channel. Oh, gosh. The Namkyun is Hugin? Igo? No, Namkyun is Hangukin. Igo? No, it's Hugin. But, Edri, Yodar, Igo Myung is there. Yeah, so they. One, two, three of the kids they had together, and then um, seven children. Yeah, but they, man, it's it's so fun. They're they're a great family. <laughs> and so yeah, I, I have no doubt that um, that we'll we'll definitely like link up with them because you know I've spoken to Joe, Joe Lee, um, oh, before yeah. I actually came to Korea. Like yeah, you and Joe are pals. No, he was cool. He was cool. He was helping me and stuff. I know. But like, eight people, eight people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 저희는 한국에 살고 있고 메이즈리는 미국에 있어요. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So seven kids, but they want eight. Yeah. How? How can you have that many children? <laughs> yeah, but it's cool. I mean, I think at that point, cause, she's, she's cause, of, cause, yeah, yeah. Elena, is, she's, she's, that's a bad woman for sure. And not only that, but when you ha now you have some of the kids starting to become teens, so you have this little army that yeah. can like do everything for you, <laughs> you know, and help out with the younger kids. It's great. <laughs> I don't want that many kids, but I could only imagine how fun it would be. Huh. Yeah. Wow, so many children. How many kids do you want? Not you, I'm asking the audience. <laughs> how many kids do you, how many kids do you guys want? It's a very want? random question. I'm just curious, you know, mm. because especially in Korea, like the numbers people wanting children is like really low, like one, or some people don't want children at all. What's the case where you guys are? Good question, then. It's mm. the Yep. Ola, Ola BC said I pronounced the name correctly. Yes. That's great. And uh, also says I think everyone has some type of bias and can try to improve it mm. 100%. It's harder to progress as a society when some choose to be in an ignorant mindset. 100% agree. That's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Look, everyone's answering how many kids they want. <laughs> <laughs> Dexter 2. Let's see. Diego Pian down zero. <laughs> AJ with 10. 10 Dang. children. Wow! Right. Reggie Maybe one or five. two, five. Our scope one. Four or two. to six. Oh my god! Dang. Gosh. So lots. So many children. 절대 안 나올래. 저도 그렇게 생각했었어요. 사실은 지금도 모르겠어요. Victoria with the win. Eighty kids. Victoria, stop running. I wonder if that's possible. 80 kids. <laughs> Somebody said 80, OMG. That's how I feel. <laughs> 15! Okay, you guys are all joking now, right? This is a joke. Wow. Ernestine says men want a lot because they don't give birth. I'm not I'm not gonna deny that. I guess Yeah. I guess we're we're so we feel entitled or privileged. I don't know. Yeah. It's just easier for us. And I'm I'm sorry. Think about it. You have to Never mind, I'm not gonna get into it. I have fears <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about I, having children. No, nah, for sure though. Uh -huh. Like it's easier for men to obviously say <laughs> how many they want. Look, 80년, 80년 <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to be pregnant for eighty years if you want eighty kids. Unless 아니면 한 번에 다섯 명. 다섯 명 나, 나, Yeah, if you have right? a bunch of like like can tuplets yes you think it doesn't have to be 80 years could have been but i don't think a human body can handle that no, i don't know no <laughs> seriously no ser aj no seriously 10 children <laughs> aj that's not funny <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. like Genghis khan <laughs> do we a boy and a girl would be perfect right very even Ivy Dean says, I think I can only handle one. One is enough, man. I mean, I want more than one, but like one is a handful for sure. Oof. Children. Yeah, man. It's all hypothetical, guys. I work for Disney. I'm around thousands of them a day. 
So doesn't that make you want to have less, AJ? Ten? Ten. Where, where, uh, where do you work? Do you work Disney in Florida? Do you work in Cali? Just curious. Because I know Disney World just opened up. Wow, I love that everyone's talking about kids. It's pretty cute. <laughs> Florida. Cool, cool. Mm. Well, AJ is set on that. AJ wants those kids. Ten of them. Ten. That's... Ten. <laughs> Dang. Mm. But I would imagine it'd be How fun. about you? How many kids? Yeah. Ah, two to three. Mm. Boys, girls. Girls. You only like girls. I love girls. I mean, that sounds creepy, yeah, but... Yeah, that was weird. I want to have, well, obviously, if I have, like, three, I would want to have a mixture. Of girls. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. Four. Four is a lot. Three four is, is a lot too. good. Because I grew up with just me and my sister, which is oh, fine, wow. but I think maybe having a third would just, would be, like, good. 두 명이 가장 적당한 듯 해요. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two girls and one boy. Yeah, I think two girls and one boy would be cool. Or the other way around, two boys, one girl. I thought Maybe you only wanted girls. I mean, I guess if it's three of them, three might. I would be okay. I would be happy. Hmm. I would be happy. Yeah. Hmm. Well, thanks for answering <laughs> my question, guys. Man. I do agree having your own kid will probably change your mind drastically about children. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, we can move on from the baby talk. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the same thing as pizza. Man, you guys all love pizza and babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Did you want to talk about anything else? Uh, not in particular. Hmm. What about you? I think I'm good too. Okay. I have to pack. True. Mm. <laughs> Let's talk about pizza now. <laughs> Ooh! Cats. Alright. Yeah. How wow. tall are each of us? I'm six foot or six feet even, mm. which is 183 centimeters. I'm 176, so it's like what, 5'9.5? Mm -hmm. mm. No pets. We don't have any pets. I want one. She wants one. I want a cat. I see you, Khan. I see you, Cam Cam. <laughs> I see you, Vicky. G1 Transform huh? says, did you get your cat? Putting it in there, I see That's that. That's a no. <laughs> yeah, I'd love cats. Yeah, man. Mm. So, I mean, we're... Let's do Let's do two minutes and 20 seconds left, and it'll be two hours. Yeah. Okay? And then we'll, we'll call it. All right, so okay. how about this? In our last two minutes, what you guys can do is leave comments on what videos you want seen. Okay. Like if you if you have specific topics that you be interested in hearing us talk about or cover in some way, um, put it in the group chat. Mm. You have two minutes, go. Definitely. <laughs> and also, before we leave, um, if you guys didn't watch the video that we just released, mm. definitely make sure you watch it. And uh, yeah, it would mean a lot if you would share it as well because we want to you know, just get the message out you know, if that's something you're comfortable with, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Religion, personal styles, ragdoll, ragdoll cats. Hey. Oh wait. No, no, nobody but God. We actually released the how we met video and how we started dating video. You can see it on the channel. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Nineties <gasps> kid. Like we have a nineties kid in here. The nineties kid. I'm a nineties kid. <laughs> I'm sure we have a lot of 90s kids. I know, but th this person's proud of it. You know what? No, so I'm a little, I'm a little like confused because I was born in the 80s, mm. but I'm a 90s kid. You're born one minute so, left. So you don't have to be born in the 90s to be a 90s kid, but you have to have grown up. 
in the 90s. But I think if you're born in the early 80s, you're not a 90s kid. You're an 80s kid. No. 90s kid. No, you're not your 80s. I grew up on Nickelodeon and, and what else? All those uh, 90s cartoons, those sitcoms. That's a Raven? No, that's like... 90s. 90s kid. No, that's a Raven is like 20, 2000s, early 2000s, but I think. But you haven't been a 90 kid to fully appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Any That's a Raven fans in here? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Korean festivals. Man, I, yo, I think... Um, I don't know if there are a lot of festivals because of COVID. Right, like but I think canceled. Yeah, a lot of them are canceled. I love Korean festivals. Mm -hmm. And um, if there are some, because there are a lot of festivals that happen in the fall as well, we'll see. And then we can do some videos on that. Mm -hmm. Like what we want to do is we want to, um, I mean, we still want to do some vlogs here and there, but we want to make more content that's, I mean, it's vloggy, but it's more like value packed. And we could show you, for example, like, what Korean festivals are like, not mm -hmm. just, hey, we're here at a Korean festival, look what's here, mm -hmm. but more so, this is a Korean festival, this is what you can find here, mm -hmm. more like that. And so, just a little bit more produced. And mm -hmm. so, we want to do that, but obviously, with COVID, we have to see what happens. <laughs> so many good people have so many TV show recommendations. Yeah. So funny. Look, we have Ninja Turtles. You love Ninja Turtles. Oh, I love Ninja Turtles. He insists on everyone calling him Raphael. It's just like his thing. I don't know. He just walks around. He has like this red bandana that he puts on. And then he's just like trying to pull out his swords. And it's weird, guys. I don't know why he does it. He didn't have swords. And why does he do it in public? You would know. He had, the, uh, he had the... Uh... That's what I meant. Those things. No, it's like the little... The, what do you call it? I know what you're talking about. Like with the three... Yeah! <laughs> what are those? I don't know. Pokies. <laughs> Leonardo had the swords. See, I told you. He he loves... Chip and Dale toys. Rescue Rangers. Throwback. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, we crossed, we crossed the minute mark. We crossed the minute mark. Yeah. This is so much fun. Mm, this is fun. You guys, I love the conversation. Also, hey, what about if, would you guys be interested if I did videos on beauty and skincare? Because you oh. mentioned, some people mentioned that in the previous live stream, and it is something I'm thinking very seriously about. How can I do something for you guys concerning uh, skincare mm -hmm. and health and beauty? Yeah, we, we are planning on, after that conversation from the last live stream, we're, mm -hmm. we're thinking about definitely adding some of that like there's a lot we want to do we want to obviously make it relevant mm. it's gonna be relevant to us of course uh, but i think it'll be like very interesting for y'all so mm -hmm. we want to do that but i think Ve becky's gonna take more of the lead on that and i'll just be there <laughs> i don't know <laughs> you can be in the background just doing push-ups the whole yeah. time <laughs> people will but, appreciate yo korean skincare is a very interesting topic mm -hmm. even for guys too mm -hmm. so and very varied yeah, mm -hmm. oh, I'm just suggesting that we do we talk about the ten things we like and dislike about each other. Ooh, that's okay. a good one. Cook it to Yeah, we're gonna screenshot all these too. Cute. Uh, Vida, yeah, that's that's also a great question. And honestly, if I did videos on skincare, I happily will share all my information. Mm. I believe everybody deserves to have skin that they are happy in. Lizzie McGuire. <gasps> Sailor Moon. Oh my gosh. I was, I, was, I was Sailor Moon all the time. In the name of the moon, I will punish you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I, I used to, to watch be, Sailor Moon. I wanted to be Sailor Mars, but my sister made me Sailor Mercury. It's alright. I'm still sad about that. That's it's my right. Han. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another thing. We want to do a video on Han as well. We, um, mm -hmm. so we, did we already release the podcast? The audio podcast uh, is coming out tonight. Okay, so yeah. tonight we're releasing the podcast yeah. on, on Han. On Han, Iran, but the podcast on the Yeah, and then next week will be the video version on the Happy Project YouTube channel. Mm. And, um, but then we're gonna also make wow. a video on Han. I'm seeing so many things in here that I haven't thought about in a long time, mm. like Holes. I loved that book. Holes is a great book. Inspector Gadget was always very weird. Dun, 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 dun. Inspector Gadget. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Rurouni Kenshin. I had a friend who was really into that. Oh my gosh. Seriously, so many things. Okay, I'll admit Sailor Venus had great hair. 
Ooh, Korean temples, countryside, and vacation stuff. That would be cool, too. That's a very good idea. We could yeah. make that a nice cinematic vlog. Yeah, I think, um, and I think all of them are still accessible, mm -hmm. you know, and opened up. So we could do mm -hmm. that, because I, I, I need a vacation, man. Hey, also, workout vlog. Yeah, workout vlog, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't work out at the same gym. But so I be... will show you guys. You think he's so strong, but he has weak points, too. I guess so. <laughs> Ivy Dean, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank She's you. Just, thanks for being you. Aw. <gasps> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. It's really, mm. really meaningful. I like being me too. Yeah. Good night, Clay. Clay lover, good night. Good night, good night. Yeah. I guess it is pretty late over in the US right now. <gasps> Clarissa explains it all. Yo, I remember that. And then, then that creepy friend that would always climb in her bedroom, like through the window on the ladder. Yo, I remember that. I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of that. Yeah, that was Melissa Joan Hart mm. in the 90s. I don't know who that is either. Korean University. Oh, oh, we should go visit. Yonsei. Visit, yeah, Yonsei. Actually, I have, I already made my appointment <gasps> with that. So maybe we can do something that day. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. That's mm -hmm. such a great idea. Yonsei is beautiful. That's where I studied. Right. Mm. Okay. That's good. That's good. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh my gosh, guys, I totally lied to you. I said we'd finish five minutes ago. Saved by the Bell? Do you know Saved by the Bell? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh. I didn't watch it. See, she's not a 90s kid. You're not a 90s kid. I'm not a TV kid. You're like a 40s, 50s kid. I'm like a book kid. Saved by the Bell was my jam. I used to catch all the reruns from all the seasons. I didn't like the first season because I was weird, but then second season on up was good. Then they had the college years, which was also kind of weird, but... What? They went to college? Yeah. Zach Morris, that is weird. Screech, Kelly Kapowski. How about Sister Sister? I watched that too. Roger, go home. Oh yeah. Roger was was my dude because I was a big Immature fan, and mm -hmm. he was actually in the musical group Immature. He was a lead oh. singer. Oh, oh, didn't see Houston. that coming. Yo, man, I'm I'm all about the '90s. Y'all don't even know, man. <laughs> Y'all don't even know. I am a book person, book and music. Hmm. OMG, 너무 감사합니다. <gasps> 감사합니다. Thank you so much. 아니 처음으로 이렇게 라이브 스트림하면서 한국말 하는 건데 그만큼 고마운 거예요. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ernestine, <laughs> how much is three thousand nine hundred? Gundam Wing. That's about three dollars and some change in mm. USD. Ten things you should never do in South Korea, US. Mm. Okay. That's interesting. Whoa, 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 wait, Marcus, hold on, Marcus says Mark Paul Gosler is Hapa. You know what? I could see that. Who is he? He's the main character, Zach Morris. Of what? Say by the Bell, sorry. Oh, okay. Ah, I could see that. He looks a lot like uh, one of our mutual friends, Steve. <laughs> oh, really? He kind of has those vibes. I'll yeah, show you later. Okay. Oh, wow. Family map. oh my gosh. Yo, we could go on another hour <laughs> just right. talking about this, like... Ah! I'm really like thinking how should we or should we not? I don't want to bore you guys. Are we boring? I, I feel like they're all, they're all like <laughs> just entertained. I don't know. Family Matters, that was my jam too. And I will watch my, that on my TGIF. Dyson, so it's okay. Yeah. Family oh. Matters. Mike Mooney with the home improvement. Yes. I used to watch that. It wasn't one of my favorites, but I watched it. Um, I watched it enough to know what the show was about. Tim the Two Man Taylor. Hmm. That was the one with JTT, Jonathan Taylor mm -hmm. Thomas. Look, from Ohi Aka Ume. Oh man, if you were a Power Akarume. Ranger, which one it would would it be? Which one? Which one would you be? And thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. Play. Thank um, you. Let's see. Okay, I'll tell you the one that I would want to be, and then the one I'm probably closer to. <laughs> um, I think I would want to be the White Ranger. Okay, because... He was the Green Ranger turned White Ranger because White Ranger, that was Tommy. He ended up becoming the leader, even though originally the Red Ranger, Jason, was the leader. And so I really liked Tommy. I thought it was cool with his ponytail and his little, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, his little his flute, flute thing. His yeah. He played a flute? Yeah. It was like a dagger flute or something. And so that's who I would want to be. And I really liked the fact that he had, like, this little vest thing on his outfit. Um... 
but I'm probably closer to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I'm probably closer to Billy, who's dun, the nerdy dun, one. Dun, yeah. Dun. Okay. I'm probably closer oh, to the Blue Ranger. I don't know who any of those are. No, I'm not. No, I would say the Black Ranger, who was, uh, oh my gosh, what you was know, his you name? You just went through all the colors, basically. All the guys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would no, I? I would be closer to um, the, oh, I guess his name was Zach, the Black Ranger, because he was the black guy. He was the cool one. He would always dance and do like, I think he did magic tricks or something. He was a cool one. These are Power Rangers. They don't have time to play flutes and do magic tricks. That's how they summon the Zords. Oh my gosh. The what? The Zords. They're the like they're animals that they were. The actual what do you call it? They're like trans it's like a transformer knockoff concept. And then they like summon the animals like it's morphin time and then they do the thing and then the animals come running out of wherever they're sleeping or whatever. And then they all come together and form one big That's Megazord sleepers. or something. That's rude to assume they just be sleeping. I don't maybe, know. maybe they have their own lives. I don't know where they come from. And it's funny because every time they summon them, they use the same exact footage all the time. And they're always running from the same place. I actually don't know anything about Power Rangers. All I knew was there was a pink one and a yellow one. And my older sister always said she was a pink ranger. Because the pink ranger's name was Kim, and that's my sister's name. But I wanted to be the pink ranger, and I would say, I'm going to be the pink ranger today. She said, you can't be a pink ranger, because your name isn't Kim, so you're not pink ranger. That, what am I <laughs> supposed to do then? Yeah, I really like the pink ranger. That's the only ranger I knew. I didn't know anybody else. Yeah. That was a yellow ranger, too, Trini. I know, but I wanted, she was to, be, the Asian I one. wanted to be pink. Really? Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, fun fact, mm -hmm. is whenever they had the fighting scenes, because the actual, like, American characters did not play the, the fighting scenes in the, I oh, guess, the costumes. Did? It was um, from the Japanese uh, actual original, I guess, Power Rangers. Oh, wow. Because it was a spinoff, oh. basically, the American version. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, so they just recorded all of the, like, I guess, American scenes, yeah. but the fighting scenes... We're all from the Japanese version. Did you know in Sailor Moon, the Korean version of Sailor Moon, you know in, where it says, In the name of the moon, I will punish you. If you translate it from the Korean to English, it says, uh, In the name of the moon, you will pay your debts. Really? Yeah, I don't know. That's uh -huh. translation. <laughs> Man, so many, so many, like, You guys have great things. memories, seriously. Are you afraid of the dark? I remember, are you afraid of the dark? Yes, that was good, too. Hmm. Corey and Topanga, Boy Meets World... Yes, I watched that a lot too. Who wants to be a millionaire? Gumby was like LSD for kids. I still don't know what the show was about. I don't remember what that show was about either. I remember watching it. It's like a little clay animation. Oh yeah, I remember Gumby. Let's see. Green Power Ranger. Dude. Oh, OMG with the <gasps> another super chat. 감사합니다. 또한번 한국말. Ah, 감사합니다. <laughs> Yeah, please make lots of fun you. videos for us. We definitely will. We will, we will, we will. People want a video on K-pop. How about my time meeting Blackpink? Oh, we can do that. Story time or yeah. something. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of videos that we can make, man. Hmm. Gosh, there's a lot of great stuff here. Teen, Teen Titans! Teen Titans! Teen Titans is the only cartoon I ever watched. <laughs> Yo... <laughs> Arsco said he was born in the middle of the 80s decade. He's flexible. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I I, I uh, relate to 90s because yeah. obviously that's where most of my memories are from. I went from age 5 to 15 in the 90s. Mm. <gasps> Look! 한국 가사랑 영어 가사�ang 바꿔 부르기. That's actually... That is taking Korean lyrics in singing it in English lyrics. Hmm. Or vice versa, we could do too. Right. Yeah. 사실은 그런 요청이 들어왔어요. Actually, yeah. Or like actually to do that. So, Dang, man. It's a lot of, lot of good stuff. Hey, Cam Cam. Piping back in. Teen Titans. <laughs> who was the girl in Teen Titans? I, liked, I don't know who was the I guy. I don't she know could, Was she the one who could fly? All I remember is I liked Teen Titans, but now I can't remember anything about it. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I just saw another show that I totally forgot about. Salute your shorts. <laughs> Salute your shorts. I remember that what show. What does that Kimberly. even mean? <laughs> so that was, man. I think that was Nickelodeon, right? That was a show about these kids who were like camp counselors or something, like a kid camp. And they're like, 
It was a really weird, weird show. Well, that title, it's super weird. Yeah, Salute Your Shorts. I remember that. Hey, look, look, here's one. Total makeup, Hejugi. I'm trying so hard, guys. He doesn't let me, let me do any makeup on him. Nah, I'm good. Even Michael Jackson wore makeup. You thought you liked his eyeliner in the bad phase. I did. 1987 yeah. era? Yeah. 1988 as well. I can make you look like that. Nah, I'm alright. Good, <laughs> I could. No. Nah. Camp on a wanna, we hold you in our hearts. And when we think about you, it makes me wanna fart. Yo! I can't, rem I can't believe I remember that. I literally have not seen that in like 20 plus years. Well, there's probably a good reason why. Dang. That's awesome. Sorry for that, y'all. <laughs> Didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, Ivy. I think, um, yeah, she, it was like a couple weeks ago. She met Blackpink. Some people don't want to see you with makeup on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I met Blackpink um, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago for a commercial. Skincare for men. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. So, man, we've got a lot of stuff. Skincare for men. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Wow, seriously, people really have long memories. I kept saying I was a 90 kid, but I actually don't know 80% of what's on here. Yeah, you didn't watch anything. I didn't watch anything. Doing that group in the 90s, I was busy playing outside. I didn't play computer games or anything. The only video game I ever played was Nintendo Smash Brothers and Nintendo um, Zelda. Zelda. Majora's Mask. Yeah, you would be the type to play RPG games. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see. Wow, we have so much stuff here. Mike Mooney, it's good to hear from you, man. Me and Mike, we go back to Fayetteville. Hmm. <laughs> Saying I could sing. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't trying. I was just... You <laughs> <laughs> can sing. <laughs> Wow. Well, wow. I think right now we're having a bit of nostalgia. Yeah, thing. man. Yeah. Hey, commentary person wants to ask why you like horizontal stripes on your shirts and on the wall. Um, I never thought about it. <laughs> this is just a style of blinds that's yeah. very popular in Korea. Yeah. So, uh, the horizontal stripes only have one shirt with horizontal stripes, but I have another, like, button-up shirt with like the vertical stripes horizontal stripes technically make you look wider mm. vertical makes you look skinnier but I personally don't care as long as the shirt looks good and fits well that's all I, I'm concerned about that's literally all he's concerned about mm. oh man Marcus that's a good question uh, what do people eat for breakfast in Korea mm. man you know, I can't really honestly answer that. I mean, I know like traditionally, Korean you, Korean people usually eat just like very simple like like home like pop rice and like maybe side dishes, egg. maybe yeah, egg or soup or like uh -huh. jjigae or something. But these days, I don't know. Mm, I don't know because like wow, could have changed a lot. Yeah, I think people might just go out, get a coffee, some bread. And I'm not speaking for everyone. I mean, mm. I think certain people, like, I think younger people might have different eating habits. Like, mm. I know, like, people like my mom, they just every day eat rice and, mm. like, kimchi and stuff mm. like that. We ate that a lot, too. Mm -hmm. And, like, grapefruits. I mm. ate cereal growing up. So. Mm. All right. We should really... Oh, you know, we should really wrap this I up. I said cereal and then Siri answered. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a lot of great ideas in here. Yeah, we got to screenshot everything, man. And then we're going to make a schedule and then just start shooting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope, you, I hope you guys are enjoying all the content we're been, we've been pushing out. Because, mm -hmm. like, we're trying to actually get to a point where we're uploading twice a week and a variety of content that's still relevant, interesting for you guys. And, uh, yeah, we're going to try to keep up with that schedule. It's hard to nail down a certain day. Like, right now, our aim is just Wednesday and Saturday uploads. Um but we, we don't want to commit to making that schedule yet because mm. we sometimes we'll have like work that'll come in that mm. makes our week really mm -hmm. busy. 
But hopefully you guys are enjoying all the content. We're going to just like keep pushing stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, so anyways, I think, guys, we're going to go ahead and, and wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, we'll stay here all day talking yeah, to you guys. It's almost been two and a half hours, wow. man. I love it. Um, man, thank you guys for the support, Sifo George. Thank you for that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and Reggie B, Reggie BB. Oh, man, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Cam Cam, yes, lunchtime for us. Because that bread didn't do it. Um, again, we're actually very grateful and thankful that um, you guys are very, one, supportive, but also we can have these tough conversations with each other. Mm. And we can all be mature about it and just learn and grow from one another. Uh, so we're very grateful for that. And also, again, if you guys haven't seen the video that we uploaded, we do encourage you to go watch it and mm -hmm. share it if you can. Uh, we think it would be good. And if we just want to get. If you feel it would be valuable yeah, to your friends of course. or people around you. Yeah. And uh, we, again, we're going to take all of your suggestions. We're going to go through them and try to schedule it out and just mm -hmm. start shooting. And uh, that's going to be our focus is really putting a lot of like effort into this channel mm -hmm. and just putting stuff out amongst some of the other things we have going on. So we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess that's about it. That's it. And I'm surprised no one mentioned Pokemon. Wow. And now you're going <laughs> to, now the comments are going to go crazy, I bet. It's okay, guys. Don't get into it. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, um, I don't know. I guess that's I think it. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably live stream again in maybe about two weeks. We're going to try to mm -hmm. live stream every two weeks mm -hmm. around that schedule. Mm-hmm. And probably around the same time, either mm -hmm. Saturday or Sunday Korea time, mm -hmm. or Friday Saturday Eastern time. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna definitely try to do that. Um, other than that, you got Pokemon <laughs> going on. <off>. The Pokemon. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. It's because so. I know all the songs. That's why. Yeah. Charmeleon. Anyways, thanks again. We're gonna sign off. Stay safe. We love you. And remember to always seize the day. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Bye, guys. Peace.